Malaysian cuisine consists of cooking traditions and practices found in Malaysia, and reflects the multi-ethnic makeup of its population. The vast majority of Malaysia's population can roughly be divided among three major ethnic groups, Malays, Chinese and Indians. The remainder consists of the indigenous peoples of Sabah and Sarawak in East Malaysia, the Orang Asli of Peninsular Malaysia, the Peranakan and Eurasian Creole communities, as well as a significant number of foreign workers and expatriates. As a result of historical migrations, colonization by foreign powers, and its geographical position within its wider home region, Malaysia's culinary style in the present day is primarily a melange of traditions from its Malay, Chinese, Indian, Indonesian and ethnic Bornean citizens, with heavy to light influences from Thai, Portuguese, Dutch, and British cuisines, to name a few. This resulted in a symphony of flavors, making Malaysian cuisine highly complex and diverse. Because Peninsular Malaysia shares a common history with Singapore, it is common to find versions of the same dish across both sides of the border regardless of place of origin, such as laksa and chicken rice. Also because of their proximity, historic migrations and close ethnic and cultural kinship, Malaysia shares culinary ties with Indonesia, as both nations often share certain dishes, such as satay, rendang and sambal. History Food and ingredients Pantry essentials Chili peppers are indispensable to Malaysian kitchens, and both fresh and dried chilies are used. Chilies come in several sizes, shapes and even colors. As a general rule, two type of chili cultivars are the most commonly available, the bird's eye chili, sealy patty, which although small in size are extremely pungent and very hot, and longer varieties, which tend to be much milder. Green chilies are more peppery in taste, while red chilies, green chilies which have been left to ripen, have a slightly sweeter heat. If a milder flavor is preferred, the seeds and membranes are removed from the chili pods before they are cut, or the chilies are left whole and removed prior to serving. Some common uses include but are not limited to, grinding the chilies into a paste or sambal, chopping fresh chilies as a condiment or garnish, and pickling whole or cut chilies. Belican is essential to Malaysian cooking. It is a type of shrimp paste which is pressed into a block and sun-dried. In its raw form it has a very pungent smell. Once cooked, the shrimp paste's aroma and flavor mellows and contributes a depth of flavor to the dish. To prepare belican for use, one typically wraps a small amount in foil, which is then roasted over a flame or placed into a preheated oven. Belican is most commonly pounded or blended with local chili peppers, shallots and lime juice to make the most popular and ubiquitous relish in Malaysia, sambal belican. Belican is also crumbled into a ground spice paste called rempa, which usually includes garlic, ginger, onions or shallots, and fresh or dried chili peppers. A rempa paste is similar in form and function to an Indian wet masala paste or Thai curry paste, and is often browned and caramelized Malay, tumis, to mellow the raw flavors of its component ingredients and produce a harmonized finish. The coconut Malay, kelapa, is another quintessential feature of Malaysian cuisine, and virtually all parts of the plant are used for culinary purposes. The white fleshy part of the coconut endosperm may be grated, shredded and used as is, dried to make desiccated coconut, or toasted until dark brown and ground to make kerasik. Grated coconut flesh is also squeezed to make coconut milk, which is used extensively in savory dishes and desserts throughout the country. Coconut oil is used for cooking and cosmetic purposes, and may be either obtained by processing copra dried coconut flesh, or extracted from fresh coconuts as virgin coconut oil. Coconut water, the clear liquid found inside the cavity of each coconut, is a popular cooler in Malaysia's hot and humid climate. Gula Malacca is unrefined palm sugar produced from the sap of the coconut flour. It is the most traditional sweetener in Malaysian cooking and imbues a rich caramel-like flavor with a hint of coconut. Coconut fronds are traditionally used to wrap food. Hollowed out coconut husks and shells may be used as a source of charcoal fuel for barbecued meats and traditional pastry making, and even the apical bud or growing tip of the coconut palm is a popular delicacy served in rural communities and specialist restaurants. Soy sauce of different varieties is another important ingredient. Light soy sauce contributes its pleasantly salty flavor to a variety of stir fries, marinades, and steamed dishes. 
In some hawker establishments, freshly sliced or pickled chilies arrive immersed in light soy sauce to be used for dipping. Dark soy sauce is thicker, more intense in flavor and less salty. It is often used when a heartier flavor is desired, particularly with masak kaikap, a style of braising with a blend of soy sauce varieties, dishes, and also to darken the color of a dish. Kaikap manis, sweetened soy sauce sometimes flavored with star anise or garlic, is also a popular seasoning for cooking. The sweet and savory taste of kaikap manis also functions as a substitute to approximate the combination of dark soy sauce and thick caramel sauce, which is primarily used to color and season stewed dishes. Common herbs include lemongrass, malay, sarai, a type of grass with a lemony aroma and flavor. Young, fresh stems are more desirable as older stems tend to acquire a woody texture. The tender white part closest to the base of the stem is thinly sliced and eaten raw in salads, or pounded with other aromatics to make a rempa. It is also used whole in boiled and simmered dishes. The pandan, scrupine, leaf is the Asian equivalent of vanilla in Western cuisine. The subtle aroma is released when the leaves are bruised by tying one or two long leaves into a knot, and used for cooking curries, rice and desserts. The leaves can also be used to wrap items like rice, chicken or fish for cooking. Pandan leaf is also available in liquid essence or powdered form to flavor and color cakes. Turmeric Malay, kunyat, is a rhizome popular for its flavor as well as coloring properties. The leaves and flowers of the turmeric plant are also used in cooking or eaten raw. Tofu products, specifically fried tofu, are widely used as cooking ingredients and as side accompaniments. While fried tofu can be bland in flavor on their own, its main contribution is texture and especially with tofu puffs, the ability to soak up the flavor of whatever they are cooked in. Fried tofu products are found as a versatile component ingredient for dishes like stir-fried noodles, rajak, fruit and vegetable salad, noodle soups, and stews. A popular way of serving fried tofu on its own is a salad with bean sprouts, shredded cucumber and spring onions, covered in a thick sweet and spicy dressing and dusted with roasted ground peanuts. Fried tofu may also be stuffed with a mixture of ground meat or shredded vegetables. Dried seafood products contribute a savory depth of flavor to some Malaysian dishes. Small dried anchovies, known as ikan bilis, are very popular. It acquires a very crispy texture when deep fried, and is served as an accompaniment or prepared as a sambal relish in this capacity. Econ bilis is also boiled to make fish stock, in fact, instant econ bilis stock granules are a popular seasoning in modern kitchens. Dried shrimp and salted dried fish are also used in various ways. Other essential seasoning and garnishes include tamarind, malay, Assam jawa, specifically the paste-like pulp extracted from the fruit pod which contributes a tart flavor to many dishes. Candlenuts, malay, bua caras, are similar in appearance to macadamia nuts, being round, cream-colored and have a high oil content. Candlenuts are normally ground to thicken sauces. Luk chung is a type of dried Chinese sausage made from pork meat and spices. Mainly used by the Malaysian Chinese community, these sweet sausages are usually sliced very thinly and added for additional flavor and texture. Recent studies have shown that there are 62 commonly consumed Malaysian foods that include biogenic amines. Rice Rice Malay, NASI, was and still is the most important staple food in Malaysia. According to Indonesian-born food and cookery writer Sri Owen, there is some evidence for rice cultivation found in the state of Sarawak in Malaysian Borneo dated 2300 BC, and about 900 years of history for the state of Kelantan in West Malaysia. Today Malaysia produces about 70% of the amount of rice it needs to support itself, and the rest is imported. This is a matter of policy as the government believes that national resources can be used more profitably instead of attempting to achieve self-sufficiency with rice production. The prevalent attitude is that revenue generated from its industries enables the country to import up to half the rice it needs. Nevertheless, the government is fully committed and involved in planning, allocating resources and managing subsidies for the rice farming industry. The state of Kedah is considered the rice bowl. Malay, Jelapang Paddy, of the country, accounting for about half of Malaysia's total production of rice. Plain steamed white rice, to be served with side dishes of meat or vegetables, is typically prepared with an electric rice cooker at home. 
Some households and food establishments prefer to cook rice on a stove top with the absorption method or the rapid boil method. Compressed rice, called NASI himpit, is another method of preparing and cooking rice. The rice is wrapped with fronds or leaves and compressed into the form of a cylinder, which is then cooked by boiling. The rice would compress and merge during the cooking process. Compressed rice is usually eaten cold with some sort of gravy, although it may be served warm in a broth or soup. A notable variant of compressed rice prepared by the Bugis community is Barasic. Rice is pre-cooked with coconut milk before it is wrapped in banana leaves and steamed until fully cooked. Besides the ubiquitous white rice, there are different types of locally grown and imported rice available in the market, and each type has a specific cooking method to bring out optimal results. Glutinous rice Malay, kulit, is one example, because of its low amylose and high amylopectin content which results in a sticky texture after cooking. Glutinous rice is prepared with different measurements and techniques and is not a suitable substitute for normal rice or vice versa. It is typically used for making snacks and desserts, but glutinous rice is also prepared as a savory staple by indigenous peoples like the Orang Asli as well as the Dayak people of Borneo. Lamang is glutinous rice roasted in a hollowed bamboo tube, and is prepared for festive occasions like Ari Gawai, Hari Raya Adilfitri, and Hari Raya Adilada. Nasi Lamak A popular dish based on rice in Malaysia is Nasi Lamak, rice steamed with coconut milk and pandan leaves to give it a rich fragrance. Of Malay origin, Nasi Lamak is frequently referred to as the national dish. It is customarily served with ikan bilis, peanuts, sliced cucumber, hard-boiled eggs and sambal. Although it is often considered a breakfast dish, because of the versatility of nasi lemak in being able to be served in a variety of ways, it is commonly eaten at any time of the day. For a more substantial meal, nasi lemak may be served with fried chicken, curries, or a spicy meat stew called rendang. Kanji kanji is a type of rice porridge or gruel popular among Malaysia's ethnic communities. It is eaten primarily as a breakfast food or late supper. It is also considered particularly suitable for the sick as a mild, easily digestible food. Kanji is called bubor in Malay, zhou written in Chinese, pronounced as zhou in Mandarin Chinese and juk in Cantonese, and kanji kanji in Tamil. It may be served plain with little embellishment, or cooked with ingredients like fish slices, seafood, chicken, beef, pork, vegetables, and even spices. The importance and popularity of kanji in the Malaysian diet is such that bubur ayam or chicken kanji is a permanent fixture on the menu of Malaysian McDonald's restaurants. Noodles noodles are another popular staple, particularly in Malaysian Chinese cuisine, but used by other groups as well. Noodles such as Bai Hoon, Mi Fen Hokkien, Bai Hun, Malay, Bihan, Rice Vermicelli, Kui Tiao, Guo Tiao Hokkien, Koa Tiao, or Ho Fun, Hei Fen Cantonese, Ho Four Fan Tu, Flat Rice Noodles, Mi, Mian or Mian, Hokkien, Mi, Malay, Mi, Yellow Noodles, Mi Sua, Mian Xian or Mian Xian, Hokkien, Mi Soa to the power of N, Wheat Vermicelli, Yi Mian, Yi Mian or Yi Mian, Cantonese, G1 Minute 6, Golden Wheat Noodles, Dong Fen, Dong Fen Hokkien, Tang Hun, Cantonese, Dung One Fan Two, Cellophane Noodles, Lao Shu Fen, Lao Shu Fen Cantonese, Lu 5 Syu 2 Fan Two, Silver Needle Noodles, and others provide an alternative source of carbohydrate to a serving of rice that accompanies every meal. Stir-fried noodle dishes Malay, Mi Goreng, are ubiquitous throughout Malaysia's cities, towns and villages, with numerous localized variants prepared by various ethnic communities according to their culinary traditions and preferences. Bread Malaysia does not produce wheat, and all supplies are imported from wheat-producing countries. Nevertheless, Western-style white bread and Indian breads made with wheat flour like roti kanai are fairly common foods in the modern Malaysian diet today. A very typical way of serving white bread in Malaysia is having it toasted and spread with kaya, a sweet spread made from a base of coconut milk, eggs and sugar. Reflecting the British colonial influence in Malaysia, kaya toast or roti bakar is a popular breakfast staple and afternoon tea snack. It is typically paired with a cup of local brewed coffee or tea, and soft boiled eggs to be seasoned to taste by the diner with soy sauce and ground white pepper. Roti kawan is a variation where butter is sandwiched along with a layer of kaya between slices of untoasted white bread. Traditional wheat-based, pleated steamed bao or pao Chinese, bao is a Chinese staple which has become tightly woven into Malaysia's gastronomic fabric. 
Pao are found in restaurants doing brunch dim sum trade, as well as specialist Chinese capitium. Sweet fillings may include tausa, lotus seed paste, kaya, pandan, ground peanuts, and custard. Savory fillings may consist of delicious stewed char shao, Chinese, cha shao chicken or pork. Malay versions pao, may be found in night markets pasar malam, and they are always halal, with fillings of curried potato, chicken or beef. Some variants have a quail egg in the middle in addition to the curry. Oven-baked bread buns are also available in specialist bakeries, capitium, and restaurants. One local speciality in particular, a bun with a buttery core and topped with a crispy and fragrant coffee pastry crust, has achieved iconic status in Malaysia, and franchises like Rotaboy and Papa Roti which specialize in these coffee buns have successfully expanded abroad to multiple nations and spawned hundreds of outlets. However, the popular buns that remain a favorite among Malaysians are the buns that are filled with a deliciously sweet shredded coconut filling, kaya, coconut jam, pandan kaya, screwpine with coconut jam, sweet corn, chocolate, red bean paste and butter buns. Meat Malaysian poultry is handled according to halal standards, to conform with the country's dominant and official religion, Islam. Imported poultry is available at major hypermarkets, supermarkets and speciality stores especially in affluent areas where a significant expatriate community can be found. Fish, both freshwater and sea, features prominently in the Malaysian diet. Most local fish is purchased soon after it is caught, while frozen fish is generally imported. Such fish, namely salmon and cod, are well received on the Malaysian table but are not found in Malaysian waters. Many types of seafood are consumed in Malaysia, including shrimp or prawn, crab, squid, cuttlefish, clams, cockles, snails, sea cucumber and octopus. In general, members of all ethnic communities enjoy seafood, which is considered halal by Malaysian Muslims, according to Shafi'i Fiqh, though some species of crabs are not considered halal as they can live on both land and sea. Sea cucumbers are considered halal. Beef is common in the Malaysian diet, though it is notable that the consumption of beef is proscribed by some followers of Hinduism and certain Chinese folk religious sects. Beef can be commonly found cooked in curries, stews, roasted, or eaten with noodles. Malays generally eat beef that is halal. Australian fresh beef which is prepared under supervision of the government supervised Muslim slaughter system AGSMS is imported into Malaysia and that beef is halal Malaysian Malays who form about half of Malaysia's population are Muslim and therefore do not consume pork since Islam forbids it this does not prohibit others from producing and consuming pork products, and thus pork can be found in wet markets, supermarkets and hypermarkets, usually displayed with a non-halal disclaimer. Pork is consumed by the Chinese communities, the Aban, the Kadazan, Murat, Loon Bawang, Lundaya, the Orang Asli, and expatriates. In Malaysia, the term, mutton, refers to goat meat, lamb, or the meat of a young sheep, is always imported from countries like Australia and New Zealand. In the past mutton was primarily associated with the cooking of the Malaysian Indian community, and was not as widely eaten due to health concerns as well as its perceived gamey flavor. Today, dishes like whole spit roast of mutton, mutton biryani and mutton soup are now a common sight at banquets and events. Today, the demand for mutton during the fasting month and Hari Raya period has now far exceeded that for Deepavali and Christmas combined. Vegetables. Locally grown vegetable produce is available year-round as Malaysia is a tropical country and does not have four seasons. During rainy seasons, vegetable yields may decrease, which may result in an increase on market price, but rarely if ever stop altogether. Imported produce has made inroads into the market in recent years, either to supplement local demand for essential ingredients like garlic and potatoes, or to supply produce which do not grow well in Malaysia's climate and soil conditions. A few regions in Malaysia, like Cameron Highlands and the foothills adjacent to Mount Kinabalu provide the appropriate mean temperatures and soil conditions for the cultivation of temperate produce like Camellia sinensis or tea. Malaysian grown greens, tubers and vegetables commonly found nationwide include but not limited to amaranth, bayam, bean sprouts, tauga, brinjals, tarung, bitter gourd, peria, bok choy, sawi, cabbage, kobus, choy sum, cucumber, timun, Chinese celery, don sup, coriander, don ketimber, ginger, halia, green beans, konkun, ladies' fingers, 
Bendi, leeks, lettuce, lotus root, maize, jagging, napa cabbage, cobus china, sweet potatoes, ubi keledic, spring onions, don bawang, sorapus androgynous, sakor manis or sire manis, pumpkin, labu, shiitake mushrooms, sendawan, stink beans, better known as patai, tapioca, ubi kayu, taro or yam, ubi keladi, tomatoes, yambean or turnip, turmeric, kunyat, and yard long beans, kakang panjang. In some areas in Malaysia, local produce is grown on a small scale, and many rural communities like the peninsular Orang Asli and certain tribal peoples of Sarawak forage wild edible ferns or vegetables to supplement their diet. Diplasium esculentum, better known as Puchik Paku Pakis, is perhaps the most widely available fern and is found in eateries and restaurants throughout the nation. Stenocolina palustris is another type of wild fern popularly used for food. Endemic to East Malaysia, it is called Midan in Sarawak and is prized for its fiddleheads by locals and visitors. Stenocolina palustris is known by the native peoples of Sabah as lemiting, lembiting or lombiting, where both the leaves and the fiddleheads of the plant are eaten. The young shoots of plants like bamboo and coconut are popularly harvested as food by communities outside urban areas. A popular way to cook leafy vegetables like kankun in sweet potato leaves is stir-frying with a pungent sauce made from belican, shrimp paste, and hot chili peppers. Other vegetables popularly cooked this way include bean pods and fiddlehead ferns like paku pakis and midan. Vegetables like carrots, cucumbers, onions and yard-long beans are used to make a localized variety of pickle called a car. Vegetables and herbs are also popularly served undressed and often raw in some rural indigenous communities as ulam. In ulam spread may include items such as banana blossoms, cucumber, winged beans, pegaga leaves, patai, and yardlong beans, typically eaten with a pungent dipping sauce like sambal belican. Fruit Malaysia's tropical climate allows for fruit to be grown all year round. A huge variety of common and obscure fruits, either locally grown or imported are available throughout the country. While the vast majority of fruits grown in Malaysia naturally thrive in the tropics, a few areas in the country like Cameron Highlands or Kundasang in Sabah have a different climate zone which enables the cultivation of temperate fruits like strawberries. Fruit are commonly served after a meal as desserts, and fruit juices are highly sought after as drinks of choice in a climate that is hot and humid all year round. Pickled fruits or jerik are popular and widely available, whether sold from street stalls or specialist shops. Many localities are named after native fruits, most notably Alor Sitar, Bua Sitar and Malacca, Bua Malacca. Fruits are used to make a popular salad dish called rajak, Chinese. Shui Guo Luo, pieces of fruit and vegetable bound with a viscous dark sauce made from shrimp paste, sugar, chili, and lime juice. The Penang version is particularly popular and well regarded. The dish is usually topped with a generous sprinkling of toasted ground peanuts. Notable fruits which are cultivated in Malaysia include the banana, or pisang in Malay. Many different cultivars are available on the market, and plantain is used for pisang goreng. Other parts of the banana plant may be used for culinary purposes. The calamansi lime, or limau kasturi in Malay. Widely used as a souring agent in Malaysian cooking, the juice of the calamansi lime is also savored on its own with ice and secondary flavorings like green apple juice, pandan leaves and dried preserved plums. The sempetic, a fruit with a large and rough pod-like body. The edible flesh coating each pod is sweet in taste, and has a soft texture that is custard-like. The durian, a fruit with a spiky outer shell and a characteristic odor is a local tropical fruit that is notable because it provokes strong emotions either of loving it or hating it. It is also known as the king of the fruits. Several species of durian exist throughout Malaysia. Common cultivars come with pale cream or yellow-colored arils, whereas some varieties found in Borneo are naturally bright red, orange or even purple in color. The guava, called jambu or jambu batu in Malay. It is a crunchy fruit often eaten plain or garnished with a tart seasoning mix. The honeydew, or tembakai susu in Malay. This aromatic green melon is often cut up and served with cooked sago pearls in chilled coconut milk as a dessert. The jackfruit, or nanka in Malay. It is an enormous fruit similar in appearance to sempetic, but quite different in taste and texture. 
The fleshy covering of each pod is firm and sweet. Unripe jackfruit is occasionally used for cooking savory meals. The langsat, a fruit which are born in clusters similar to grapes and resemble tiny potatoes, with a taste likened to a sweet and tart combination of grape and grapefruit. A second, larger variety known as duku generally bear fruit which are large, generally round, and have somewhat thick skin that does not release sap when cooked. The seeds are small with thick flesh, a sweet scent, and a sweet or sour alan. The longan, which means, dragon eye. In Chinese, a related species called mata kuking, literally, cat's eye, in Malay, has a virtually identical taste to commercially cultivated longan. However, the mata kuking fruit, Euphoria malayans, is smaller, the fleshy aril is thinner, and the yellow rind is bumpy and leathery like a lychee fruit. The mango, or manga in Malay. The state of Perlis is famous for its Harumanus variety, from the Mangifera indica cultivar, which is registered as a product of geographical indication G, with the Malaysian Intellectual Property Organization Maipo. Another notable species of mango found only in Borneo and used extensively in local cookery is the Mangifera pajong, known in Sabah as Bambongan and Sarawak as Buamawang. The mangosteen, or mangus in Malay. In contrast to the durian, mangosteen is often called the queen of the fruits. The papaya, or betic in Malay. Another common fruit available year-round in Malaysia, and widely eaten to conclude a meal. The pineapple, or nanas in Malay. It is widely eaten as a fruit and used extensively in local cooking, such as a curried pineapple dish called pahari nanas. The pataya, better known locally as dragon fruit. Dragon fruit is available in red and white fleshed varieties. The pomelo, or Lamau Bali in Malay. Pomelos grown in the Sungai Gadum area in the state of Perak has been granted gi status. It is also called Lamau Tamban, after the town of Tamban which is also famed for its pomelo produce. As pomelos are associated with traditional Chinese festivities, most farms harvest twice a year in conjunction with Chinese New Year and Mid-Autumn Festival. The rambutan, as the name suggests, have fleshy pliable spines or hairs on its outer shell which is usually red or yellow in color. Once the hairy exterior is peeled away, the tender, fleshy, sweet and sour tasting fruit is revealed. The rose apple, called jambu air or jambu mara in Malay, which is not to be confused with jambu batu or guava. The term refers to various syzygium species which are grown for their fruit. The fruit may be eaten on its own, or tossed through a rajak salad. The sapodilla, better known locally as buasiku. Its flesh has a grainy texture akin to ripened pear with a sweet malty flavor. The soursop, known as durian balanda in Malay and lampan to the Dusan people of Borneo. The fruit is commonly made into juice and smoothies, and the leaves of the soursop plant are boiled and taken as a herbal infusion. The starfruit, or baliming in Malay. Malaysia is a global leader in starfruit production by volume and ships the fruit widely to Asia and Europe. The tarap, also called merang, is a fruit that is native to Borneo and is related to sempedic and jackfruit. While the fruits are about the same size and shape as a durian and also emits a noxious odor, the spines of the tarap are soft and rubbery compared to the durian's hard, thorny spines. The fruit itself is smooth, soft and creamy, and the flavor is reminiscent of sweet custard apple with a hint of tartness. The watermelon, or tembakai in Malay. This popular fruit comes in red and yellow varieties. KUIH KUIH, plural, KUIH me, are usually, but not always, bite-sized foods associated with the Malay and Min-speaking Chinese communities of Malaysia. In the context of the term being cultural as opposed to being physically descriptive, the concept of KUIH may refer to a selection of cakes, cookies, confections, pastries and sweetmeats. KUIH may be eaten throughout the day for light breakfast, afternoon tea, a tradition adopted from the British, as a snack and increasingly as an after-meal course. More often steamed or fried and based on rice or glutinous rice, KUIH items are very different in texture, flavor and appearance from Western oven-baked cakes or puff pastries. 
Most KUIH items are sweet, and may be classified and eaten as desserts, but some are also savory. KUIH is an important feature for festive occasions and is traditionally made at home, but are now available for purchase from home caterers, street hawker vendors, market stallholders and specialist cafes, shops and restaurants. It is difficult to distinguish between KUIH of Malay or Peranakan, also known as Straits Chinese origin because the histories of traditional KUIH recipes have not been well documented, and cross-cultural influencing over the centuries were commonplace. Even the word KUIH itself is derived from the Hokkien Teochu word guo, pronounced kue or kue. Examples of notable KUIH mi include Ang Ku Kue, Chinese, Hong Gui Guo a small round or oval shaped Chinese pastry with red colored soft sticky glutinous rice flour skin wrapped around a sweet filling in the center. 8 PAM Balak, a turnover pancake with a texture similar to a crumpet with crisp edges, made from a thin flour based batter with raising agent. It is typically cooked on a griddle and topped with castor sugar, ground peanut, creamed corn, and grated coconut in the middle, and then turned over. Many different takes on this dish exist as part of the culinary repertoire of the Malay, Chinese, Peranakan, Indonesian, and ethnic Bornean communities, all under different names. Bahulu, tiny crusty sponge cakes which come in distinctive shapes like button and goldfish, acquired from being baked in molded pans. Bahulu is usually baked and served for festive occasions. Kukur, deep-fried fritters, sometimes known as jempit jempit. Typical varieties include kukur udang, fritters studded with a whole unshelled prawn, kukur badak, sweet potato fritters, and kukur kodok, banana fritters. Curry puff, a small pie filled with a curried filling, usually chicken or potatoes, in a deep-fried or baked pastry shell. Chinchin, a deep-fried dough pastry-based snack popular with East Malaysia's Muslim communities. Dadar, ketayip is a rolled crepe, usually flavored with pandan juice, and filled with grated sweet coconut filling, flavored with gula malaka, Malaysian palm sugar. Jeliorit, also known as Kuih Celero in Sarawak, this Kuih is made from a mixture of gula apong and rice flour, then rolled with palm leaves into cones and steam cooked. Kapit, sapit or sepi, crispy folded coconut flavored wafer biscuits, colloquially known as Love letters. Kochi, glutinous rice dumplings filled with a sweet paste, shaped into a pyramid like and wrapped with banana leaves. Niangao, Chinese, Niangao or Kuih Bakul, a brown sticky and sweet rice cake customarily associated with Chinese New Year festivities. It is also available year round as a popular street food treat, made with pieces of niangao sandwiched between slices of taro and sweet potato, dipped in batter and deep fried. Pai tea, this nianya speciality is a thin and crispy pastry tart shell filled with a spicy, sweet mixture of thinly sliced vegetables and prawns. Owned owned, small round balls made from glutinous rice flour colored and flavored with pandan, filled with palm sugar syrup and rolled in freshly grated coconut. Or Kuih, Chinese, Yu Guo a steamed savory cake made from pieces of taro, commonly known as yam, in Malaysia, dried prawns and rice flour. It is then topped with deep fried shallots, spring onions, sliced chili and dried prawns, and usually served with a chili dipping sauce. Pineapple tart, flaky pastries filled with or topped with pineapple jam. Pinyaram or penyaram, a saucer-shaped deep-fried fritter with crisp edges and a dense, chewy texture towards the center. It is widely sold by street food vendors in the open-air markets of East Malaysia. Putu piring, a round steamed cake made of rice flour dough, with a palm sugar sweetened filling. Seri Muka, a two-layered Kuih with steamed glutinous rice forming the bottom half and a green custard layer made with pandan juice. Wajid or Wajik, a compressed Malay confection made of glutinous rice cooked with coconut milk and gula malaka. Structure of meals there is no standard breakfast Malay, Sarapan, menu due to Malaysia's multi-ethnic social fabric as well as the advent of modern influences. 
Western-style breakfast like breakfast cereal, cooked eggs and toast have become commonplace in homes and when dining out, but heartier traditional fare based predominantly on noodles and rice dishes are still very popular. One may choose to start the day with the ubiquitous nasi lemak or kuih, venture for Chinese-style kanji, dim sum and noodle soups, or settle for Indian-influenced fare such as roti kanai, idli, tamil, idli idli, l, those, tamil, tokai tokai, t, o saj, and upma. In the state of Kelantan, the term nasi burlak refers to a breakfast meal which consists of a small serve of rice and complementary dishes or lak. For lunch and dinner, food is not customarily served in courses but rather concurrently. A meal may consist of a single dish for solitary diners, or rice with many complementary dishes shared by all. At restaurants where food is cooked to order, there is often no distinction between appetizers, starters and main courses, and food will arrive at the table whenever it is ready. At some traditionally run eateries where pre-cooked food is served, diners are meant to help themselves by starting with a plate of plain rice and choose from a buffet spread of assorted dishes. Like the Indonesian nasi padang, this is not an all-you-can-eat for a fixed-price dining experience. The cost of the meal would depend on what the diner selects and how many different items were placed on the plate for consumption. In Malay Runwarung, a small family-owned casual eatery or cafe, or restaurants Kedai Makan, this style of dining is known as nasi champur which means mixed rice. A similar concept exists at some eateries serving home-style Malaysian Chinese food, where it may be known as economy rice Chinese. Za, a practice known as open house. Malay, rumah terbuka, is popular during festive seasons, and even as an elaborate occasion to celebrate birthdays and weddings. Open house events are traditionally held at the home of the host, well-wishers are received and that everyone, regardless of background, is invited to attend. Home-cooked or catered food is provided by the hosts at their own expense, and while it is acceptable for guests to bring along gifts for the host, they are expected to help themselves to the food as much as they like. Open house events may also be held at restaurants and larger public venues, especially when hosted by government agencies or corporations. Food establishments A kapitiam or kopitiam is a traditional coffee shop patronized for meals and beverages, predominantly operated by Chinese proprietors and especially members of the Hainanese community. The word kopi is a Malay, Hokkien term for coffee and tiam is the Hokkien and Hakka term for shop, Chinese. A common sight in Malaysia and neighboring Singapore, menus often feature offerings like nasi lemak, boiled eggs, roti bakar, noodle dishes, bread and kuih. The owners of some kapitium establishments may lease premise space to independent stallholders, who sometimes offer more specialized dishes beyond standard Chinese kapitium fare. Typical beverages include Milo, a malted chocolate drink considered iconic to Malaysians of all ages, as well as coffee, kopi, and tea, teh. Diners would use slang terms specific to Kapitium culture to order and customize drinks to their taste. The omnipresent Mamak Stall is a Malaysian institution. Available throughout the country and Particularly popular in urban areas, Mamak stalls and restaurants offer a wide range of food and some are open 24 hours a day. The proprietors of these establishments are members of Malaysia's Tamil Muslim community, who have developed a distinct culinary style and wield an enormous influence on Malaysian food culture disproportionate to their numbers. A type of meal served buffet style at some Mamak eateries is called nasi kandar, which is analogous to the Malay nasi champur where you pay for what you have actually eaten. The diner is to choose from a variety of curry dishes made with chicken, beef, mutton, or seafood. A mixture of curry sauces is then poured on the provided rice, this is called banjir, literally means flooding. Cuisines of Malaysia Malay cuisine For a traditional Malay meal, rice is considered the centerpiece of a meal, with everything else considered as an accompaniment, relish or side for the rice. Malay cuisine bears many similarities to Indonesian cuisine, in particular some of the regional traditions from Sumatra. It has also been influenced by Chinese, Indian, Thai and many other cultures throughout history, producing a distinct cuisine of their own. 
Some regional Malay dishes, such as arisa and kakang pool, are examples of influence from Arab cuisine due to long-standing historical and religious ties. Many Malay dishes revolve around a rempa, which is usually sautéed in oil tumis to draw out flavors to form the base of a dish. A dipping relish called sambal is an essential accompaniment for most Malay dishes. Air bandung, a cold milk drink flavored with rose cordial syrup, giving it a pink color. Despite the name, there is no connection to the city of Bandung in Indonesia. Bandung within this context refers to anything that comes in pairs or is mixed from many ingredients. Asam pitas, a sour and spicy stew of meat, with the core ingredients being tamarind and chili. Depending on region, tomatoes, ladies' fingers, shredded torch ginger bud and Vietnamese coriander, Malay, don kesem, may also be added. Usually cooked with fish like mackerel or stingray, although some recipes use chicken and even oxtail. I am goreng, a generic term for deep-fried chicken, typically marinated in a base of turmeric and other seasonings prior to cooking. I am masak mara, this dish literally means red cooked chicken in English. Pieces of chicken are first fried to a golden brown then slowly braised in a spicy tomato sauce. Peas are sometimes added to the dish, and it is garnished with shredded kaffir lime leaves as well as coriander. It is often paired with nasi tomato, rice cooked with tomato sauce or paste, milk, dried spices, and a sautéed rempa base of garlic, onions, ginger. Ayam persik, also known as ayam golik in some states, ayam persik is grilled marinated chicken basted with a spiced coconut milk gravy. Bubor lambic, a savory rice porridge consumed during the fasting month of Ramadan, made with a mixture of lemongrass, spices, vegetables, and chicken or beef. It is usually cooked communally at a local mosque, which is then distributed to the congregation as a meal to break the fast every evening. In the state of Terengganu, bubor lambic is prepared with wild herbs, budu, sweet potatoes, and seafood. Gulai, the Malay term for a curried stew. The main ingredients for gulai may be poultry, beef, mutton, various kinds of offals, fish and seafood, and also vegetables such as cassava leaves and green, unripe jackfruit. The gravy is usually yellowish-brown in color due to the sautéed and browned rempa which forms its base, and the addition of ground turmeric. The gravy's consistency may vary in thickness depending on the cook. Ikan bakar, barbecued or char-grilled fish, usually smeared with a sambal-based sauce. It may also be accompanied with arasam, a dip made from shrimp paste, onion, chilies and tamarind juice. Ikan goreng, a generic term for shallow or deep-fried fish, which is almost always marinated prior to cooking. There are countless recipes and variants for what is arguably the most popular and typical method of cooking fish in Malaysia. Kebibi the food which made of 13 ingredients that has a bitter, salty, sweet, sour and spicy mixed taste. It's allegedly able to get rid of nausea after taking too much food. Karibu, a type of salad-like dish which can be made with any combination of cooked or uncooked fruits and vegetables, as well as the occasional meat or seafood ingredient. There are many caribou recipes, which often have little common in preparation. Caribou tauga is made with blanched bean sprouts and quintessentially Malay ingredients like karasik, while preparations like caribou manga, shredded green mango salad, resemble a Thai-style yam salad in taste profile. Karapak lekker, a speciality of the state of Terengganu and other states on the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia, karapak lekker is a savory fritter made from a combination of batter and shredded fish. Sliced and fried just before serving, it is eaten with hot sauce. Karutuk dodging, a type of coconut milk-based curry. Traditionally it is best eaten with white rice, sambal belican and ulam ulaman or malay salad. Katupat, a variant of compressed rice, wrapped in a woven palm frond pouch. As the rice boils, the grains expand to fill the pouch and the rice becomes compressed. This method of cooking gives the katupat its characteristic form and texture. Usually eaten with rendang, a type of dry beef curry, or served as an accompaniment to satay, katupat is also traditionally served on festive occasions such as Eid, Hari Raya Adilfitri, as part of an open house spread. Laksam or laxing, a different variant on laksa found in the northern and northeastern states of the peninsula. 
Laksam consists of thick flat rice noodle rolls in a full-bodied, rich and slightly sweet white gravy of minced fish, coconut milk and shredded aromatic herbs. Masak lamak is a style of cooking which employs liberal amounts of turmeric seasoned coconut milk. Sources of protein like chicken, seafood smoked meats and shelled mollusks, perhaps paired with fruits and vegetables such as bamboo shoots, pineapples and tapioca leaves are often cooked this way. Certain states are associated with a specific variant of this dish, for example, masak lamak sili api, patty is an iconic speciality of negri sembalan. Nasi dagong, rice cooked with coconut milk and fenugreek seeds, served with a fish gulai, usually tuna or ikan tongkal, fried shaved coconut, hard-boiled eggs and vegetable pickles. Nasi dagong, trader's rice, in Malay, is a staple breakfast dish in the northeastern states of Kelantan and Terengganu. It should not be confused with Nasi lamak, as Nasi lamak is often found sold side by side with Nasi dagong for breakfast in the east coast of peninsular Malaysia. Nasi goreng, a generic term for fried rice, of which there are many, many different permutations and variations. Variants includes Nasi goreng kampung, Nasi goreng pataya, and Nasi paprik. Nasi tumpang – rice packed in a cone-shaped banana leaf. A pack of Nasi tumpang consists of an omelet, meat floss, chicken or shrimp curry and sweet gravy. It is traditionally served as a meal of convenience for travelers on the road. Nasi ulam – rice salad tossed with a variety of thinly shredded herbs and greens don kadik, don sakor, don kesem and so on, as well as pounded dried shrimp, karasik and chopped shallots. A variant popular in the eastern coast states of peninsular Malaysia is called Nasi Karabu, which is blue-colored rice served with various herbs, dried fish or fried chicken, crackers, pickles and vegetables. Rendang, a spicy meat and coconut milk stew originating from the Manangkabau people of Indonesia, many of whom have settled in the state of Negri Sembilan. Buffalo meat is the most traditional choice for this dish, but beef and chicken are by far more commonly used for rendang in restaurants and home cooking. The common addition of karasik is another distinctively Malaysian touch. Rendang is traditionally prepared by the Malay community during festive occasions, served with katupat or nasi minyak. Roti yala, the name is derived from the Malay words roti, bread, and yala, net. A special ladle with a five-hole perforation used to form its lacy pattern. Roti yala is usually eaten as an accompaniment to a curry dish, or served as dessert with a sweet dipping sauce. Roti john, a spiced meat omelet sandwich, popularly eaten for breakfast or as a snack. Sambal, the term sambal not only refers to a relish-like sauce made from chili peppers pounded together with secondary ingredients like belican and thinned with calamansi lime juice, it also referred to a cooking style where meat, seafood, and vegetables like brinjal, malay, sambal tarung, and stink bean, malay, sambal patai, are braised in a spicy sambal-based sauce. Satay One of Malaysia's most popular foods, satay, written as sat in Malay, is made from marinated beef and chicken pieces skewered with wooden sticks and cooked on a charcoal grill. It is typically served with compressed rice-cut onions, cucumber, and a spiced peanut gravy for dipping. The town of Kajang in Selangor is famous for its satay. Sat Kajang is a term for a style of sat where the meat chunks are bigger than that of a typical satay, and the sweet peanut sauce is served along with a portion of fried chili paste. Surrounding spiced meat floss. Surrounding may also refer to any dish where the primary meat or vegetable ingredient is shredded and pulled into thin strands. In Indonesia, this term strictly refers to a dry toasted grated coconut mix instead. Sup kambing, a hearty mutton soup slow simmered with aromatic herbs and spices, and garnished with fried shallots, fresh cilantro and a wedge of calamansi lime. Variants include soups cooked with beef, Malay, dodging, beef ribs, Malay, tulang, or oxtail, Malay, buntut, ekor, all seasoned with the same herbs and spices. Tempoyak, fermented durian, traditionally stored in an urn. Tempoyak may be eaten as relish, or it can be added to braised dishes and stews as a primary flavoring, masak tempoyak. Javanese-influenced cuisine. 
There are certain Malaysian dishes with overt Javanese influences or are direct adaptations from Javanese cuisine, brought to Malaysia by Javanese immigrants who have been assimilated or integrated into the wider Malay community to various degrees. Javanese cuisine is highly distinct from mainstream Malay cooking, being noted for its simplicity and sweeter flavors, as opposed to mainstream Malay cuisine which is predominantly based on the complex and spicy regional cuisines of Sumatra. A popular way of serving Javanese-influenced food in the southern part of peninsular Malaysia is termed nasi ambong, which consists of shared platters of white rice served with accompaniments like chicken cooked in soy sauce or curried gravy, stir-fried noodles, sambal goreng, fried shredded coconut pieces, egg, vegetables and so on. Ayam panyet, deep-fried chicken which is smashed prior to serving. The other key component to this dish is a spicy sambal. Other accompaniments include cucumbers, fried tofu and tempeh. Vegetal, spherical fritters made from mashed potato and occasionally ground meat. It is called perketal in Indonesia. Botak botak, steamed banana leaf parcels of sliced fish seasoned with ground spices and shredded herbs. Lontong, vegetables stewed in a lightly spiced coconut milk soup, usually served with compressed rice and additional condiments added either during cooking or in individual servings. It is eaten during festive occasions, and also as a breakfast meal. In Indonesia this dish would be called sayur lode, and the compressed rice lontong. Nasi kuning, rice cooked with coconut milk and turmeric. A common breakfast dish in certain regions like the east coast of Sabah, where it is typically served with sambal, eggs, coconut-based serundang, and spiced fish. Not to be confused with the Peranakan nasi kunyat, which uses glutinous rice. Mi rebus, a dish which consists of egg noodles drenched in a spicy aromatic sauce thickened with cooked and mashed tuber vegetables. Versions of mi rebus found in other parts of Malaysia are sometimes called mi jawa, perhaps as a nod to its likely Javanese origin. Pikal pikal is a vegetable salad with cucumber slices, long beans, bean sprout, fried tofu, blanched kankun, and tempeh dressed in a peanut sauce. Rempeyak, deep fried savory cracker made from flour, usually rice flour, with other ingredients, such as peanuts, bound or coated by crispy flour batter. Soto, meat broth, typically served with plain rice, lontong, or noodles depending on regional variation as well as personal preference. Teller pindang, marbled eggs boiled with herbs and spices. Commonly seen in Javanese Malaysian wedding feasts and festive occasions, particularly in Johor. Tempeh, a staple source of protein in Javanese cuisine, made by a natural culturing and controlled fermentation process that binds soybeans into a cake form, similar to a very firm vegetarian burger patty, which can then be cooked and served in a variety of ways. Malaysian Chinese cuisine Malaysian Chinese cuisine is derived from the culinary traditions of Chinese Malaysian immigrants and their descendants, who have adapted or modified their culinary traditions under the influence of Malaysian culture as well as immigration patterns of Chinese to Malaysia. Because the vast majority of Chinese Malaysians are descendants of immigrants from southern China, Malaysian Chinese cuisine is predominantly based on an eclectic repertoire of dishes with roots from Cantonese cuisine, Hakka cuisine, Fujian cuisine and Teochew cuisine, as these early immigrants settled in different regions throughout what was then British Malaya and Borneo, they carried with them traditions of foods and recipes that were particularly identified with their origins in China, which gradually became infused with the characteristics of their new home locale in Malaysia while remaining distinctively Chinese. For example, Hainanese chicken rice is usually flavored with tropical pandan leaves and served with chili sauce for dipping, and tastes unlike the typical chicken dishes found in Hainan Island itself. Some of these foods and recipes became closely associated with a specific city, town or village, eventually developing iconic status and culminating in a proliferation of nationwide popularity in the present day. Chinese food is especially prominent in areas with concentrated Chinese communities, at roadside stalls, hawker centers and capitium, as well as smart cafes and upmarket restaurants throughout the nation. 
Many Chinese dishes have pork as a component ingredient, a chicken is available as a substitution for Muslim customers from the wider community, and some Chinese restaurants are even halal certified. A sample of representative Malaysian Chinese dishes found nationwide include Back cut teh, Chinese, rugu cha pork ribs soup. The root meaning for the dish, back cut, Hokkien dialect, is the term for meaty ribs, at its simplest cooked with garlic, dark soy sauce and a specific combination of herbs and spices which have been boiled for many hours. Popularly regarded as a health tonic, this soup is historically eaten by hard-working Chinese coolies working on the wharfs at Port Swettenham, now Port Klang, and clearing estates, accompaniment with strong tea. Teh. On the side, there are some differences in seasoning amongst other Chinese communities. The Teochew prefer a clear broth which is heavier on garlic and pepper, while the Cantonese may include additional varieties of medicinal herbs and spices. Variations include the so-called chick ka teh made with chicken and a version that is gaining popularity with Muslim diners, seafood back ka teh, and a dry, reduced gravy version which originated from the town of Klang. Bakwa, Chinese, rugan literally. Dried meat. Bakwa is better understood as barbecued meat jerky. While this delicacy is especially popular during the Chinese New Year celebration period, it is available everywhere and eaten year-round as a popular snack. Bean sprouts chicken, Chinese, ya kai ge po's most well-known dish. Bean sprouts chicken consists of poached or steamed chicken accompanied with a plate of blanched locally grown bean sprouts in a simple dressing of soy sauce and sesame oil. The crunchy and stout texture of ipo grown bean sprouts is attributed to the mineral-rich properties of local water supplies. The dish is usually served with hor fun noodles in a chicken broth, or plain rice. Cantonese fried noodles Chinese, Huang Fu Chao refers to a preparation of noodles which are shallow or deep fried to a crisp texture, then served as the base for a thick egg and cornstarch white sauce cooked with sliced lean pork, seafood, and green vegetables like choy sum. A variation called yuan yang Chinese, yuan yang involves mixing both crisp fried rice vermicelli as well as hor fun to form a base for the sauce. A related dish called Hua Tan Hor Chinese, Hua Dan He uses Hor fun noodles, but the noodles are not deep fried, merely charred. Chai To Kui Chinese, Kai Tu Guo a common dish in Malaysia made of rice flour. It also known as fried radish cake, although no radish is included within the rice cakes, save perhaps the occasional addition of preserved radish Chinese, Kai Pu during the cooking process. Seasonings and additives vary from region, and may include bean sprouts and eggs. Char Kui Tiao Chinese, Chao Guo Tiao Chao Hei, stir-fried rice noodles with bean sprouts, prawns, eggs, duck or chicken, chives and thin slices of preserved Chinese sausages. Cockles and lardons were once standard offerings, but mostly relegated to optional additions these days due to changing taste preferences and growing health concerns. Penang-style char kui tiao is the most highly regarded variant both in Malaysia as well as abroad. Chi chung fun, Chinese, zu chong fen is square rice sheets made from a viscous mixture of rice flour and water. This liquid is poured onto a specially made flat pan in which it is steamed to produce the square rice sheets. The steamed rice sheets is rolled or folded for ease in serving. It is usually served with tofu stuffed with fish paste. The dish is eaten with accompaniment of semi-sweet fermented bean paste sauce, chili paste or light vegetable curry gravy. Ipo and Penang have different variants of the dish as well. Certain stalls in Ipo serve the dish with a red sweet sauce, thinly sliced pickled green chilies and fried shallots, whilst in Penang, a type of sweet black shrimp sauce called hei ko is the main condiment. Chung Cheng style steamed fish Chinese, Zhang Zheng Yu Chung Cheng literally mean gravy or sauce steamed. The main ingredients for the gravy or sauce are fermented bean paste and chilies. Chicken rice Chinese, Ji Fan chicken rice is one of the most popular Chinese-inspired dishes in Malaysia. Hainanese chicken rice Chinese, Hainan Ji Fan is the best-known version, it is prepared with the same traditional method used for cooking wanchong chicken, which involves steeping the entire chicken at sub-boiling temperatures within a master stock until cooked, to ensure the chicken meat becomes moist and tender. 
The chicken is then chopped up, and served with a bowl or plate of rice cooked in chicken fat and chicken stock, along with another bowl of clear chicken broth and a set of dips and condiments. Sometimes the chicken is dipped in ice to produce a jelly-like skin finishing upon the completion of the poaching process. In Malacca, the chicken rice is served shaped into balls. Curry mi, Chinese, kali, a bowl of thin yellow noodles mixed with bihan in a spicy curry soup enriched with coconut milk, and topped with tofu puffs, prawns, cuttlefish, chicken, long beans, cockles and mint leaves, with sambal served on the side. It is often referred to as curry laksa. White curry mi, Chinese, by kali similar to curry mi, however the soup base is in white color instead of yellow or red. The white color comes from the coconut gravy, Malay, Santan, Chinese. Yijong fish ball, Chinese, Yu Wan Yu Dan Yu Yuan are fish paste shaped into a spherical shape. Usually fish ball is served as a condiment together with rice vermicelli or yellow noodles in a clear soup base. Bean sprouts and spring onions are also commonly added, complemented by a small plate of chili patty soaked in soy sauce. Fish cake is also a common addition. Fish head bihan, Chinese. Yu tu mi, a noodle soup in which the main ingredients are rice vermicelli and a deep fried fish head cut into chunks. The soup itself is somewhat creamy, which is usually achieved using a mixture of rich fish stock and milk. Tomatoes and pickled vegetables are sometimes added to cut the richness and provide a tangy foil for the noodle soup. Hakka mi, Chinese. K ja mi and hakka mi is a simple dish of noodles topped with a ground meat gravy. A popular hawker dish with Hakka cultural roots, it is based on an older recipe called Dabumian. Chinese, Dabumian the name indicates its place of origin as Dabu County. Chinese, Dabu Xi'an the center of Hakka culture in mainland China. Hiang Peng, Chinese, Xiangbing These fragrant pastries, which resemble slightly flattened balls, are a famed speciality of Ipo which are now widely available in Malaysia and are even exported overseas. It contains a sweet sticky filling made from malt and shallots, covered by a flaky baked crust and garnished with sesame seeds on the surface. Hokkien mi, Chinese, Fujian chow mi and actually has two variants, with each being ubiquitous to a particular region of peninsular Malaysia. Penang Hokkien mi, colloquially referred to in Penang as Hokkien mi, is also known as Hei mi, Chinese, Sha mi and elsewhere in Malaysia. One of Penang's most famous specialties, it is a noodle soup with yellow and rice noodles immersed in an aromatic stock made from prawns and pork, chicken for halal versions, and garnished with a boiled egg, poached prawns, chopped kankun and a dollop of spicy sambal. Hokkien charmi, a dish of thick yellow noodles braised, fried with thick black soy sauce and added with crispy lardons, is more commonly served in the Klang Valley. It was originally developed in Kuala Lumpur. Thus, within the central region of peninsular Malaysia, the term hockey and me refers to this particular version. Ipo White Coffee, Chinese. Yi Bao Bai Ka, a popular coffee drink which originated in Ipo. Unlike the robust dark roast used for typical Malaysian-style black coffee. Kopi O. White. Coffee is produced with only palm oil margarine and without any sugar and wheat, resulting in a significantly lighter roast. It is typically enriched with condensed milk prior to serving. This drink inspired the Old Town White Coffee restaurant chain, and instant beverage versions are widely available throughout Malaysia and even in international markets. Kam Hiang, Chinese, Jin Shang literally. Golden fragrance. In English, Kam Hiang is a method of cooking developed in Malaysia, and is a good example of the country's culinary style of mixing cultures. The tempering of aromatics with bird's eye chilies, curry leaves, crushed dried shrimp, curry powder, oyster sauce and various other seasonings yields a versatile stir-fry sauce that goes well with chicken, clams, crabs, prawns, and squid. Kui chap, Chinese. Guo, Teochew dish of rice noodle sheets in a dark soy sauce gravy, served with pork pieces, pig offal, tofu products and boiled eggs. Lor mi, Chinese, lu, a bowl of thick yellow noodles served in a thickened gravy made from eggs, starch and pork stock. Marmite chicken, Chinese, ma mi ji a unique dish of marinated fried chicken pieces glazed in a syrupy sauce made from marmite, soy sauce, maltose and honey. 
This dish may also be prepared with other ingredients like pork ribs and prawns. Ngah, Po Fan or Sha Po Fan, Chinese, Wa Bao Fan or Sha Bao Fan, seasoned rice cooked in a clay pot with secondary ingredients, and finished with soy sauce. A typical example is rice cooked with chicken, Chinese sausage, and vegetables. Clay pots are also used for braising noodles, meat dishes and reducing soups. One of the most famous and common one is Clay pot chicken rice, Chinese, Wa Bao Ji Fan chicken rice served in a clay pot, traditionally cooked with charcoal. Typical additions include salted fish and lap chung. Bircham, a suburb in Ipo, is famous for clay pot chicken rice. Go hang or lor bak, Chinese, Wu Shang or Lu Ru, a fried meat roll made from spiced minced pork and chopped water chestnuts rolled up in soya bean curd sheets, and deep fried. It is usually served with small bowl of lore, a thick broth thickened with corn starch and beaten eggs, and chili sauce. The term also extends to other items sold alongside the meat rolls, like dao kwa, hard tofu, pork sausages, tofu skin sheets etc. Oyster omelet or o chian, Chinese, hao jian a medley of small oysters is sautéed on a hot plate before being folded into an egg batter, which then has moistened starch mixed in for thickening, and finally fried to a crisp finish. Unlike other versions of oyster omelets found throughout the Hokkien and Teochew diaspora, a thick savory gravy is never poured onto Malaysian-style oyster omelets. A chili sauce is provided on the side for dipping instead. Pan mi, Chinese, ban mi and noodle soup with hand kneaded and torn pieces of noodles or regular strips of machine-pressed noodles, with a toothsome texture not unlike Italian pasta. A variant popular in the Klang Valley is known as chili pan mi and which of cooked noodles served with minced pork, a poached egg, fried anchovies and fried chili flakes which are added to taste. Chili pan mi is accompanied with a bowl of clear soup with leafy vegetables. Popaya, Chinese, bao bing hokkien, teochu style crepe stuffed and rolled up with cooked shredded tofu and vegetables like turnip and carrots. The Peranakan version contains julienne bangkwang, jicama, and bamboo shoots, and the filling is seasoned with tauchu, fermented soybean paste, and meat stock. Another variation consists of popaya doused in a spicy sauce. Popaya can also be deep fried and served in a manner similar to the mainstream Chinese spring roll, tau sarfia, Chinese, do sha bing, a famous Penang delicacy. This round shaped Chinese pastry contains primarily green bean paste, and its ingredients include wheat flour, sugar, and salt. It is also known as tamban biscuits as it was widely believed that the pastry originated from Bukit Tamban, Penang. Its popularity as a delicacy has made this pastry one of the must buy souvenirs from Penang. Wonton mi, Chinese, yun tun mi and thin egg noodles with wonton dumplings, Chinese, yun tun choy sum and char shao. The dumplings are usually made of pork or prawns, and typically boiled or deep fried. The noodles may be served in a bowl of broth with dumplings as in the traditional Cantonese manner, but in Malaysia it is more commonly dressed with a dark soy sauce dressing, with boiled or deep fried wonton dumplings as a topping or served on the side in a bowl of broth. Variations of this dish are usually in the meat accompaniments with the noodles. These may include roast pork, shao ru braised chicken feet, and roast duck. Shao, yao zha gui or eu char kui or yu tiao, Chinese, yu zha gui or yu tiao, a version of the traditional Chinese crueler, which is a breakfast favorite. It can be eaten plain with a beverage like coffee and soy milk, spread with butter or kaya, or dipped into kanji. It is shaped like a pair of chopsticks, stuck together. Yang Tao Fu, Chinese, Niang Do Fu tofu products and vegetables like brinjals, ladies' fingers, bitter gourd and chilies stuffed with fish paste or surimi. Originally developed in Ampang, Selangor, Malaysian Yang Tao Fu is a localized adaptation of a Hakka dish called Nagong Tu Fu stuffed tofu with ground pork paste and is usually served in a clear broth, with or without noodles. Yusheng, Chinese, Yusheng a festive raw fish salad, also pronounced yi sang in the Cantonese manner. While raw fish preparations are thought to have existed in China during antiquity and can be found in the Chaoshan region of Guangdong province in modern times, Yusheng was created and developed in Singapore in 1964 when the republic was still a member state of the Federation of Malaysia. It consists of strips of raw fish tossed at the dining table with shredded vegetables, crispy tidbits and a combination of sauces and condiments. 
Yusheng literally means raw fish, but since fish is commonly conflated with its homophone, abundance, Yusheng, Yusheng is interpreted as a homophone for Yusheng, Yusheng meaning an increase in abundance. Therefore, Yusheng is considered a symbol of abundance, prosperity and vigor. As a result, the mixing and tossing of Yusheng with chopsticks and the subsequent consumption of the salad has become ritualized as part of the commemoration of Chinese New Year festivities in Malaysia and Singapore. Zongzi, Chinese, Zongzi a traditional Chinese food made of glutinous rice stuffed with savory or sweet fillings and wrapped in bamboo, reed, or other large flat leaves. They are cooked by steaming or boiling, and are a feature of the Duanwu festival, which is still celebrated by the Chinese communities in Malaysia. Lei Cha, Chinese, Lai Cha This aromatic drink is a Hakka staple. The recipe differs from household to household, but generally green tea leaves are added to a mixture of salt, ground mint leaves, toasted sesame seeds and nuts. The mixture is ground or pounded into a fine powder, then brewed into a drink. Tastes salty, minty, and full of nutrition. Malaysian Indian cuisine Malaysian Indian cuisine, or the cooking of the ethnic Indian communities in Malaysia consists of adaptations of authentic dishes from India, as well as original creations inspired by the diverse food culture of Malaysia. As the vast majority of Malaysia's Indian community are mostly ethnic Tamils who are descendants of the modern Indian state of Tamil Nadu and Sri Lanka. S. Northern Province, much of Malaysian Indian cuisine is predominantly South Indian inspired in character and taste. A typical Malaysian Indian dish is likely to be redolent with curry leaves, whole and powdered spice, and contains fresh coconut in various forms. Ghee is still widely used for cooking, although vegetable oils and refined palm oils are now commonplace in home kitchens. Before a meal it is customary to wash hands as cutlery is often not used while eating, with the exception of a serving spoon for each respective dish. Food served in the traditional South Indian manner is termed banana leaf rice. Plain white or parboiled rice would be served with an assortment of vegetable preparations, lentil gravy, pickles, condiments, and papadam crackers on a banana leaf, which acts as a disposable plate. Banana leaf meals are eaten to celebrate special occasions such as festivals, birthdays, marriages, or to commemorate funeral wakes. It is customary to consume banana leaf meals by hand and to show appreciation for the food by folding the banana leaf inwards, though less ritual and etiquette is observed when the meal isn. T part of a formal occasion, such as the Malayali community. S. Elaborate sadhya feasts. Boiled eggs, meat or seafood dishes are available at banana leaf restaurants which are not exclusively vegetarian or vegan. Some notable Malaysian Indian dishes include Chapati, a North Indian style flatbread. It is made from a dough of atta flour, whole grain durum wheat, water and salt by rolling the dough out into discs of approximately 12 cm in diameter and browning the discs on both sides on a very hot, dry tava or frying pan without any oil. Chapatis are usually eaten with curried vegetables, and pieces of the chapati are used to wrap around and pick up each bite of the cooked dish. Fish head curry, a dish where the head of a fish, usually econ mara, or literally, red fish is braised in a thick and spicy curried gravy with assorted vegetables such as ladies' fingers and brinjals. Fish moli, originally from the Indian state of Kerala, this preparation of fish in a spiced coconut milk gravy is perhaps the Malaysian Malayali community's best known dish. Idli, made from a mashed mixture of skinned black lentils and rice formed into patties using a mold and steamed, idlis are eaten at breakfast or as a snack. Idlis are usually served in pairs with vadai, small donut-shaped fritters made from mashed lentils and spices, chutney, and a thick stew of lentils and vegetables called sambar. Lassi, a yogurt-based drink which comes in savory and sweet varieties. A common drink of Tamil origin which is similar to lassi but is thinner in consistency is called moru. It is seasoned with salt with flavored with spices like asafoetida, curry leaves and mustard seeds. Maji goreng, a unique mamak style variant of mee goreng or stir fried noodles, using reconstituted maji instant noodles instead of yellow egg noodles. 
The noodles may be wok tossed with bean sprouts, chili, greens, eggs, tofu, and meat of choice, although no recipe at any mamak eatery are ever the same. It is usually accompanied with a calamansi lime. Murtabak, a savory dish of stuffed roti kanai or flatbread eaten with curry gravy. A typical recipe consists of a minced meat mixture seasoned with garlic, onions and spices folded with an omelet and roti kanai. Murtabak is popularly eaten with a side of sweet pickled onions during the fasting month of Ramadan. Maruka, a savory snack of spiced crunchy twists made from rice and urad dal flour, traditionally eaten for Deepavali. Nasi biryani or biryani, a rice dish made from a mixture of spices, basmati rice, yogurt, meat or vegetables. The ingredients are ideally cooked together in the final phase and is time-consuming to prepare. Pre-mixed biryani spices from different commercial names are easily available in markets these days, which is meant to reduce preparation time. Pachati, a traditional South Indian side accompaniment or relish made with vegetables, fruits or lentils. The Malaysian Telugu community celebrate the Telugu New Year or Ugadi by preparing a special dish called Ugadi Pachati, which blends six taste notes as a symbolic reminder of the various facets of life. It is made with green chili, heat, unripe mangoes, tangy, neem flowers, bitter, jaggery, sweet, tamarind juice, sour, and salt. Pasember, a salad of shredded cucumber, boiled potatoes, fried bean curd, turnip, bean sprouts, prawn fritters, spicy fried crab, and fried octopus. This Penang Mamak speciality is served with a sweet and spicy nut sauce, and variants of this dish are found in other states as Mamak Rajak. Pongal, a boiled rice dish which comes in sweet and spicy varieties. It shares the same name as the Harvest Festival which is celebrated every January. The name of the festival itself is derived from this dish. The sweet variety of pongal, prepared with milk and jaggery, is cooked in the morning. Once the pongal pot has boiled over, symbolism for an abundant harvest, it is then offered as a prasad to the gods as thanksgiving. Pori, an unleavened deep-fried bread made with whole wheat flour, commonly consumed for breakfast or as a light meal. A larger North Indian variant made with leavened all-purpose flour or maida is called badara. Puttu, a speciality of the Salinese Tamil community, puttu is a steamed cylinder of ground rice layered with coconut. It is eaten with bananas, brown sugar, and side dishes like vendaya kolambu, tamarind stew flavored with fenugreek seeds and lentils, or kutu sambal, relish made from pounded coconut, onions, chili and spices. Kutu mayam, the Indian equivalent of rice noodles, also known as idiapam. Homemade versions tend to be eaten as an accompaniment to curried dishes or dal. The street food version is typically served with grated coconut and orange-colored jaggery. In some areas, Gula Malacca is the favored sweetener. Roti kanai, a thin unleavened bread with a flaky crust, fried on a skillet with oil and served with condiments. It is sometimes referred to as roti kosong. A host of variations on this classic dish may be found at all mamak eateries, either at the creative whim of the cook or by customer's special request. A few examples include, roti teller, fried with eggs, roti bawang, fried with thinly sliced onions, roti bomb, a smaller but denser roti, usually round in shape, roti pisang, banana, and so on. Roti tissue, a variant of roti can I made as thin as a piece of 40 to 50 centimeters round shaped tissue in density. It is then carefully folded by the cook into a tall, conical shape and left to stand upright. Roti tissue may be served with curry gravy, dal and chutneys, or finished off with sweet substances such as caramelized sugar and eaten as a dessert. Teh tariq, literally meaning, pulled tea. Teh tariq is a well-loved Malaysian drink. Tea is sweetened using condensed milk, and is prepared using outstretched hands to pour piping hot tea from a mug into a waiting glass, repetitively. The higher the tariq, or pull, the thicker the froth. The pulling also has the effect of cooling down the tea. Teh tariq is an art form in itself and watching the tea streaming back and forth into the containers can be quite captivating. Similar drinks and variants include kopi tariq, or pulled coffee. Instead of tea, teh halia, tea brewed with ginger, and with or without the tariq treatment, and teh madras, which is prepared with three separate layers, milk at the bottom, black tea in the middle and foam at the top. 
Those, dosa or dose, a soft crepe made from a batter of mashed urad dal and rice, and left to ferment overnight. The batter is spread into a thin, circular disc on a flat, preheated griddle. It may be cooked as it is for, which results in a foldable and soft crepe, or a dash of oil or ghee is then added to the those and toasted for crispier results. Badai, vada or vades, is a common term for many different types of savory fritter type snacks originated from South India with a set of common ingredients. The most common ingredients are lentils, chilies, onions and curry leaves. East Malaysia Across the sea from peninsular Malaysia on Borneo Island, lie the states of Sabah and Sarawak. Traditional lifestyles and limited roads still predominate outside of the major cities, especially in Sarawak, where rivers are the only major highways for much of the inland population. The jungles of Borneo are teeming with wild plants, fungi, and fruits, and its sweeping coastlines and many large rivers provide an abundance of seafood and freshwater fish fit for the dinner table. A rich variety of traditional food has been developed by Borneo's many tribes and indigenous groups over the centuries, much of it is healthy food, consisting of foraged now increasingly cultivated due to modernization and fermented foods. Because much of the region was once under the Brunei Sultanate. As Thalassocracy, the Bruneian Malay people have left a lasting culinary influence, particularly on the cookery of the coastal Muslim communities of East Malaysia. According to the source paper written in 2006, the Malaysian food industrial sector accounted for about 14% of the total manufacturing energy consumption. Like peninsular Malaysia, rice is the undisputed staple food for the majority of the people of Sabah and Sarawak. Rice is central to Kadazandusan culture, and its paramount importance is reflected in the annual Kaamatan festival, as well as traditional beliefs and customs since antiquity which revolve around the veneration of rice spirits. But for other ethnic communities throughout Sabah and Sarawak, cassava or tapioca tubers as well as sago starch are also popular staples. The tapioca tuber is just as important as rice to the Baju people of Sabah, while the Dayak peoples of Sarawak make extensive use of both the tuber and leaves of the tapioca plant in their cooking. Sago starch is derived from the pith extracted from the sago palm, and is the staple food for the Melanau and the Penan peoples of Sarawak. Sago starch is prepared as a gooey and sticky paste by the Visaya and Kedayan communities called Ambuyat, and is called linut by the Melanau. It is eaten by rolling the paste around the prongs of a bamboo fork, and dipped it into soup, sambal, or other varieties of gravies and dipping sauces. Aside from being the source for sago pith, the sago palm is a source of another delicacy for the indigenous peoples of Borneo, the sago grub. Called buded in Saba and ulat mulong in Sarawak, sago grubs are typically eaten raw but also served deep fried, roasted or sauteed. Historically speaking, fresh produce is often scarce for hunter-gatherer nomadic tribes around the world, thus it is usually preserved out of necessity for important events and festivals. The tribal peoples of Sabah and Sarawak are no different, most of them have developed age-old techniques for curing, fermenting or preserving their supplies of fresh meat, fruit and vegetables. For example, during festive occasions the Murat people of Sabah would serve tamba jurik or jurik in the Malay language made from fresh raw wild boar or river fish, which is stuffed in bamboo tubes along with rice and salt and left to ferment for a few weeks, a technique which is also practiced by the Loon Bawang people across the border in Sarawak. Fermented products are also frequently used as a cooking ingredient besides eaten on its own. Dayak households in Sarawak may saute their version of fermented meat with garlic and tapioca leaves, either fresh or pickled, and fermented tempoyak is a popular cooking seasoning. The production and consumption of traditional liquor plays an important cultural role for the non-Muslim peoples of East Malaysia. Alcoholic drinks made from rice is the most common form, as well as the widely available. In Sabah, the Penampang Kadazan lying is perhaps the most well known. Yet, due to the historical lack of a standardized Kadazandusan language used and understood statewide, ethnic groups from other districts in Sabah have very different names for similar fermented rice based drinks. Haing, certain Dusan languages, Kanomal, Sigantang, Kinnering, Kanopi, Lanahas, and even Tapai to add to the confusion. Tapai proper, as understood by most peninsular Malaysians, is a fermented sweet and sour rice paste served as a snack or dessert, although further fermentation of the Tapai to produce alcoholic drinks is possible. Possible. The preferred party drink of the murat, made from the tuber of the cassava or tapioca plant, is also called tapai. 
the Aban of Sarawak call their rice wine tuak, which must not be confused with Sabahan talak, which is a hard liquor made from rice. To the native peoples of Sarawak, tuak may also refer to any alcoholic drink made from fermenting any carbohydrate-rich substance besides rice. Sabahan food the food of Sabah reflects the ethnic diversity of its population and is very eclectic. Traditional Kadazandusan cuisine involves mostly boiling or grilling and employs little use of oil. From simple appetizers of seasoned unripe mango to a variety of pickled foods collectively known as nunzam, tangy and pungent flavors derived from souring agents or fermentation techniques is a key characteristic of traditional Kadazandusan cooking. Rice wine accompanies all Kadazandusan celebrations and rites, and at a murat event there will be rows upon rows of jars with fermented tapioca tapai. Presently few eateries in Sabah serve traditional indigenous dishes, although it will always be found during festive occasions like weddings and funerals, as well as the Kaamatan and Kalamaran cultural festivals. Chinese-influenced dishes like northern Chinese potstickers and Hakka stuffed tofu, along with many original creations developed in Sabah's interior settlements by immigrants from both northern and southern China throughout the 20th century, feature prominently on the menus of many Kapitiam establishments and upscale restaurants. Sabah is notable for its excellent seafood, temperate produce and tea. Sabah tea has ghee status, grown in the highlands of Mount. Kinabalu, and a small coffee plantation industry with Tenem coffee considered the best produce in the region. Local ingredients like freshwater fish, wild boar, bakas in native dialects, bamboo shoots, wild ferns, and various jungle produce still figure prominently in the daily diet of the local population. As a significant portion of rural communities still subsist on agriculture as their primary source of income, small-scale festivals are even held each year at certain towns to celebrate produce vital to the livelihoods of the local people, the Pesta Jagging of Kota Marudu, the Pesta Rumbia Sago of Kuala Penyu, and Pesta Kelapa from the town of Kudit. Saba vegetable, also known as Sekuk Manis or Sayur Manis Chinese, Shu Zi Kai can be found on the menus of many eateries and restaurants throughout the state of Saba. It is one of the local terms used for a variety of sorapus albicans developed in Lahad Datu, which yields crunchy edible shoots in addition to its leaves. The flavor is reminiscent of spinach but more complex. As though it had been fortified with broccoli and infused with asparagus. And is typically stir-fried with eggs or seasonings like sambal belican. Whether grilled, cured, deep-fried, steamed, stir-fried, braised, served raw, or made into soups, Saba's seafood is famed for its freshness, quality, and good value for money. A vast variety of fish, cephalopods, marine crustaceans, shellfish, sea cucumbers and jellyfish have become mainstays on lunch and dinner menus at Kapitium, restaurants, and humble food shacks all over Kota Kinabalu and other coastal towns like Sandakan, Tawau, Lahad Datu and Semporna. Seafood paired with noodles also figure prominently for breakfast, for each day locals flock to speciality eateries where they may be served an assortment of fish-based products to start the day. Examples include, poached patties handmade with fresh fish paste, deep-fried fish cakes wrapped in tofu skin sheets, and noodle soups with toppings like sliced fish fillet, fish balls, prawn balls, and fish innards. A few eateries even serve noodles. Rolled out with fresh fish paste, edible seaweed is a traditional food for certain seaside communities throughout Sabah and also possess ghee status. Latak is similar in appearance to clusters of green-hued fish eggs or grapes, and is typically prepared as a salad by the Baju people. Coral seaweed is another popular seaplant product, in recent times it is marketed as a gourmet health food to both locals and tourists, and is given the moniker of Seabird's Nest. Chinese, Hai Di Yan Wo as coral seaweed acquires a similar gelatinous texture when dissolved in water. Among the foods and beverages particular to Saba are Amplang is a type of cracker made from Spanish mackerel, tapioca starch and other seasonings, and then deep fried. Bahar or Ba is the Kadazandusan variant of palm wine made with sap collected from the cut flower bud of a young coconut tree and a special type of tree bark called rasak, endemic to the Tuaran district. Pieces of the rasak is dipped into the coconut nectar during the fermentation process, which contributes a reddish hue to the final product. Beaufort Mi Chinese, Bao Fu Chao Mian is a speciality of Beaufort town. 
Handmade noodles are smoked, then wok tossed with meat, usually slices of char shao and marinated pork, or seafood and plenty of choy sum, and finished off with a thick viscous gravy. Basu, also called noonsam or tonsam, is the kadazandusan term for a traditional recipe of tangy fermented meat. Smoked and pulverized bua kaluak, nuts from the kepayang tree, pangium edul, which grows in Malaysia's mangrove swamplands, or pangi is a key ingredient and acts as a preservative. Combined with rice, salt and fresh meat or fish, the mixture is then placed into a sealed jar or container for fermentation. Contemporary variants for basu add bananas and pineapples to the mixture. Pinongian is a variant where rice is omitted to produce a final product which is much less tangy in taste, however, unlike basu, Pinongian must be cooked before serving. Hinava is a traditional kadazandusan dish of raw fish cured in lime juice. Typically, firm-fleshed white fish like mackerel, hinava sada tangi, is marinated with lime juice, sliced shallots, chopped chili, julienne ginger and grated dried seed of the bambongan fruit. Optional additions may include sliced bitter gourd. Hinava may also be made with prawns, hinava gipan. Lying is a rice wine made exclusively from glutinous rice and natural yeast called sasad. Bittersweet in taste profile, lying is a speciality of the Kadazan Penampang community, where it is still commonly brewed at home. Lying can be used to make chicken soup, sup monic lying, used in marinades, or even as an ingredient for meat pastries and stir fried dishes. Commercially produced lying, much pricier than the home brewed version but consistent in quality, is also available in select souvenir shops. Lying and similar rice wine variants from other Kadazandusan communities may also be distilled to produce a hard liquor called montoku or talak. Linangad is a type of leaf parcel, usually iric or tarap leaves, filled with a combination of cooked rice and root vegetables like sweet potatoes and yam. Alternate names known by Kadazandusan communities in other districts include linopod and cinemazan. Nasi combos is a rice dish from the loaded community. Glutinous rice is first cooked with young coconut water, and then mixed with the grated tender flesh of a young coconut. The rice is traditionally served in a hollowed-out coconut shell. Nansum bambongan is a pickle made from half-ripe bambongan fruit mixed with grated dried bambongan seed and salt, sealed in a tightly covered jar and left to ferment for weeks. Ngiu chap niu shane is a Chinese-influenced dish of beef or buffalo broth served with noodles, usually immersed in the soup with slices of poached beef or buffalo meat, meatballs, stewed brisket, tendon, liver and various offal parts. An iconic Sabahan dish, Ngiu chap has many different variations, from the lighter Hainanese style to heartier Hakka-influenced flavors, and even village-style Ngiu chap adapted for indigenous tastes. Piran a monik is a chicken curry made from a sautéed rempa base and grated coconut, then braised in coconut milk. This dish is very popular in the Iranan community. Variants include fish piran a sada and unripe jackfruit piran a badak. Nuba layat nuba tinga is an ordinary rice wrapped with banana leaf or nyuric leaf. This dish is as to ease the farmer and the traveler for them to carry for a long journey. Usually this dish is as very famous among the Loon Bawang, Lundaya people and this dish is a bit similarity to the Linangat. However, this Nuba Tingat, Nuba Laya is different because the rice is very soft and can be eaten easily by senior citizen. Pinasakan or Pinarasakan is a home-style Kadazandusan dish of fish simmered with tak of akab, dried skin of a mangosteen-like fruit which functions as a souring agent, or slices of unripe bambongan, as well as fresh turmeric leaves and rhizome. Pinyaram, or known as Penyaram, is a Baju and Bruneian Malay heritage. It is famous and popular almost everywhere in Sabah and can be found in night markets and Tamu, Sabah weekly market. Sagal or Sinigal is a Baju speciality of fish which is first blanched and minced, then sautéed with turmeric, garlic, ginger, onions and crushed lemongrass. Traditionally the oil used is rendered fish liver oil, usually from the same fish used to prepare this dish. This dish may be prepared with shark, stingray and even puffer fish. Sang Nyuk Mian, Chinese, Shangru Mian is a dish of noodles served with pork broth, originating from Tawau. 
Very popular with the non-Muslim communities of Sabah, it is named after the poached to order slices of tender marinated pork served in pork broth which is flavored with fried lard bits. The noodles, usually thick yellow noodles, are either dressed in dark soy and lard, or dunked into the soup along with the aforementioned pork slices, vegetables, meatballs and offal. Sinilao refers to kadazandusan style smoked meat, which is usually wild boar or bakas. Barbecued on a char grill and eaten with rice and dipping sauces, Sinilao bakas can be found and purchased in rural areas and towns. Halal versions substitute wild boar for other game meats like deer. Sinamu baka is a loon bawang, lunde a traditional food. This is a tangy fermented food same like a basu but the difference is, is sinamu baka only suitable for wild bear. Tinongelin is a slightly sparkling alcoholic drink made from maize. Tinongelin is a rungus specialty and is usually served during festive occasions, or as refreshments for guests during the performance of a ritual dance called manjigal sumundai. Tompik is a baju food made from grated tapioca, eaten as an alternative starchy staple to rice. The grated tapioca is squeezed to dry out mixture and crumbled, then fried or toasted until golden brown. Grated tapioca may also be packed into cylindrical shapes and steamed until it forms into a chewy tubular cake called putu, another traditional baju staple. Tuaran mi Chinese, do ya lan mian is a speciality of Tuaran town. This dish of wok fried fresh handmade noodles is well known in the nearby city of Kota Kinabalu as well as in neighboring Tamparuli town, where the localized adaptation is called Tamparuli Mi Chinese. Dan Bo Luo Li Chao Sheng. The noodles must first be toasted with oil in the wok to prevent it from clumping together, then blanched to reduce the stiff crunchy texture from toasting. The final step involves stir-frying the noodles to a dry finish with eggs, vegetables, and meat or seafood. Tuhao, Etlingera coccinea, is a type of wild ginger, specifically the stems of the same plant popularly served as a relish by the Kadazandusan community. The stems are typically chopped up and served fresh with lime juice, or mixed with local chives and chili peppers then cured with salt and vinegar. A more recent recipe called Surrunding Tuhao involves slicing Tuhao stems into thin floss like shreds, which is then sautéed until it becomes golden and crisp. It has a distinctive scent which is said to have a polarizing effect even among indigenous Sabahans. Sarawakian food Sarawakian is quite distinct from the regional cuisines of the peninsula. It is considered less spicy, lightly prepared and with more emphasis on subtle flavors. The most important spice in Sarawakian cuisine is pepper. Pepper is commercially produced on an industrial scale as a cash crop, and the preferred choice by local cooks when heat is wanted in a dish. Granted ghee status by Maipo, Sarawak black pepper is highly regarded by international culinary figures such as Alain Ducasse. While the Aban constitute the largest Dayak subgroup as well as the most populous ethnic group in Sarawak, much of the ethnic Aban population is still concentrated away from Sarawak. S main urban areas, congregating instead within longhouse communities scattered all over the interior regions of the state. The traditional cookery of the Aban is called pansa or pansa, which is the preparation and cooking of food in bamboo tubes. Ingredients like poultry, fish, pork, vegetables or rice are mixed with fragrant herbs like lemongrass, tapioca leaves and bungkang leaves a species of myrtle from the Eugenia genus, then sealed within the bamboo tubes and placed directly over an open fire. Cooking food this way will infuse it with aroma and flavor from the bamboo tubes while keeping it moist. During Dayak festivals or Gawai, the Aban would slaughter locally reared pigs. The pig would be cleaned thoroughly after the slaughter, have its head and stomach removed, and the rest of the pig would be cut into smaller pieces in preparation for barbecuing. The head and stomach of a pig are usually put aside and prepared separately as they are considered the choicest parts of the animal, hence pig's heads are a common edible gift brought by visitors to an aban longhouse, and dishes such as pork stomach cooked with pineapples are a must for Gawai. Sarawak is notable for its rice, currently three varieties grown in Sarawak has been granted ghee status by Maipo. Among the foods and beverages particular to Sarawak are 
Belican bihan is rice vermicelli dressed in a gravy made from ground chilies, belican, tamarind, and dried shrimp. It is garnished with cured cuttlefish, julienne cucumber, bean sprouts and century egg wedges. Bubor pitas is a type of rice kanji cooked with a specially prepared spice paste, or rempa made from turmeric, lemongrass, galangal, chilies, ginger, coconut and shallots. A fairly complex and spicy dish compared to most typical kanji preparations, bubor pitas is often prepared during the month of Ramadan and served during the breaking of fast. Don ubi tumbuk or puchik ubi tumbuk is a preparation of cassava leaves known as impasic by the aban which has the consistency of pesto, and is widely eaten among Sarawak's native communities. The pounded leaves may be sautéed with seasonings like anchovies and chili, stuffed into a bamboo tube and roasted over an open fire, or simply boiled with shallot, fat and salt. Ikan Tarabak Masan is salt-preserved toli shad, which is endemic to the coastal waters of Sarawak, stretching from Semitan to Lawas. It is considered an iconic delicacy in Sarawak, and thus a prized edible gift. Kusam Ensabi is a fermented vegetable pickle made from an indigenous cultivar of mustard greens ensabi, and is traditional to the Aban community. Kolo mi or mi kolak Chinese, gan lao mian is a dish of springy egg noodles tossed in a sweet and savory shallot, lard and vinegar dressing, and topped with seasoned minced pork and char shao. It is similar to peninsular-style haka mi or wonton mi in concept, but differs significantly in taste profile. A popular variant uses rendered oil from cooking char shao to flavor kolo mi instead of plain lard, which gives the noodles a reddish hue. Halal versions of kolo mi replace the pork components with beef, earning the moniker of mi sapi, or chicken, and lard with peanut or vegetable oil. Additional toppings can include mushrooms, chicken and crab meat. Kampua mi Chinese, gan pan mian is a similar dish from Cebu of Fuzhou origin. Laksa Sarawak or Kuching Laksa Chinese, Gu Jin La Sha is noodles, usually rice vermicelli, served in an aromatic spiced coconut milk soup, topped with shredded chicken, shredded omelet, bean sprouts, prawns, and garnished with coriander. Manak Kakangma is a Chinese-influenced dish, traditionally taken by local women for confinement after giving birth. It consists of chicken pieces cooked with ginger and kakangma Chinese, yi mu sao often seasoned with some Chinese wine or tuok by non-Muslim cooks. Manak pansa is the most typical aban pansa preparation of chicken seasoned with bungkang leaves, lemongrass, ginger, and tapioca leaves, then stuffed into a bamboo tube and roasted in the uma avok traditional fireplace. A related bidaya dish is asam sayak, with the addition of rice to the chicken mixture. These dishes are not commonly found in urban eateries and restaurants due to the practicality of roasting a bamboo tube over an open fire within a typical commercial kitchen. Nasi Goreng Dubai is rice stir-fried with Dubai Canarium odontophyllum, an indigenous fruit found only in Sarawak. It is often compared to an olive, due to their similarity in appearance as well as taste. As Dubai is highly perishable and seasonal in nature, this dish is also prepared with preserved Dubai paste. Nuba laya is cooked barrio rice which is mashed and wrapped in leaves of the Phacilophrenium maximum plant. It is considered the centerpiece of a meal for the Loon Bawang and Kelabit people. Accompaniments may include a small bowl of porridge kikid, shredded beef cooked with wild ginger and dried chili labo sinutuk, deboned shredded fish abang, wild jungle vegetables prepared in various ways, and so on. Sup turung dayak is a popular soup dish made with a native cultivar of wild eggplant, which is spherical in shape and slightly larger than a navel orange. Also called Tarunga Sam due to its natural tart flavor, this eggplant species comes in bright hues ranging from yellow to orange. Other ingredients for the soup may include fish, prawns, or fish products, dried, salted or smoked fish. Tabaloi is a sago biscuit snack which is traditionally associated with the Melanau people of Sarawak. Three-layer tea or TEHC Pung Special is an iced concoction of brewed tea, evaporated milk and gula apong nira palm sugar, syrup, carefully presented unstirred in three or more layers. Originally from Kuching, its popularity has spread to other areas of Sarawak as well as neighboring Sabah. Tuak is a type of liquor traditional to Sarawak's Dayak communities. 
It is most commonly made from fermented normal or glutinous rice, but there is no accepted convention or definition on what constitutes tuak. Tuak is essentially an alcoholic drink produced by fermenting anything that contains carbohydrates, as long as it is made in Sarawak by Sarawakians, with the Bidaya in particular are known for their skill and expertise in brewing tuak. Ingredients for tuak variants include sugarcane, tapui, tampoy, a wild fruit with a sweet and tart flavor, pineapples and apples. Tuak is normally served as a welcoming drink to guests, and as an important component for ritual events and festive occasions like Gawai and Christmas. Tuak may also be distilled to make a spirit called langkau. Umai is a traditional melanau food, accompanied with a bowl of baked or toasted sago pearls. There are two different versions of umai, the traditional sambal champur and a more contemporary variation called sambal sika jev. The former is a raw seafood salad which consists of raw sliced seafood, anything from freshwater and seawater fish, prawns and even jellyfish, cured in calamansi lime juice, tossed with ground peanuts, sliced onions and chilies. For umai jeb, the raw sliced seafood is undressed, and is simply dipped into a spicy sauce for consumption. White Lady is a chilled drink made with milk, mango juice, longan and pineapple. Invented in 1975 by a Kuching hawker, multiple variations can be found in various hawker stalls throughout the city. Cross-cultural adaptations and mixing cultures Being a multicultural country, Malaysians have over the years adapted each other's dishes to suit the taste buds of their own culture. For instance, Malaysians of Chinese descent have adapted the Indian curry, and made it more dilute and less spicy to suit their taste. Chinese noodles have been crossed with Indian and Malay tastes and thus Malay fried noodles and Indian fried noodles were born. Malaysians have also adapted famous dishes from neighboring countries, or those with strong cultural and religious ties, and in the absence of an established community from said countries have made it completely their own, a notable example being Tom Yam, one of Thailand's most well-known dishes. After migrating south of the border, Thai Tom Yam takes on the visual characteristics of a Malaysian Assam gravy with a flavor profile of sweet, sour and spicy. It is thickened with pounded chili paste which also turns it a vivid orange-red. Tamarind is often used instead of lime juice as its souring agent, and dried instead of fresh chilies are used to provide a fiery kick. Malay-style tom yam soup tends to be heavily seafood-based, whereas in Chinese-style eateries the broth's spiciness is toned down and usually serves as a base for noodle soup. Nyanya food Peranakan cuisine, also called Nyanya food, was developed by the Straits Chinese whose descendants reside in today's Malaysia and Singapore. The old Malay word nyanya, also spelled nanya, a term of respect and affection for women of prominent social standing, part madam and part auntie, has come to refer to the cuisine of the Peranakans. It uses mainly Chinese ingredients but blends them with Malay ingredients such as coconut milk, lemongrass, turmeric, tamarind, pandan leaves, chilies and sambal. It can be considered as a blend of Chinese and Malay cooking, with influences from Indonesian Chinese cuisine for the Nyanya food of Malaccan and Singaporean and Thai cuisine for Penang Nyanya cuisine. Traditional Nyanya cooking is often very elaborate, labor-intensive and time-consuming, and the Peranakan community often consider the best Nyanya food is to be found in private homes. Examples of Nyanya dishes include Akar, various pickled meats and vegetables like akar keet la, honey lime, calamansi, achar hu, fried fish, akar kiam hu, salt fish, akar timun, cucumber, akar awit, mixed vegetables, asam laksa, mandarin, yasan la. Considered one of Penang's three signature dishes, asam laksa is similar to the Malay laksa utara, which consists of a bowl of translucent al dente rice noodles served in a spicy soup made of fish, usually mackerel, tamarind, both asam jawa and asam gelujor, and don kesem. Toppings differ considerably, and may include onion, mint, chopped torch ginger flour, and slices of pineapple and cucumber. A dollop of pungent, viscous sweet fermented shrimp paste, pettis udang or hay ko, is usually served on the side. Ayam bua kaluak, a chicken stew cooked with the nuts from the kepiang tree, pangium edul. 
For this recipe, the contents of the bua kaluak is dug out and sautéed with aromatics and seasonings, before it is stuffed back into the nuts and braised with the chicken pieces. Ayam, babi pangta, a stew of chicken or pork cooked with tauchu or salted fermented soy beans, and gula malaka. It is usually saltish sweet and can be substituted as a soup dish in Peranakan cuisine, commonly use pork as this is a Peranakan version of Chinese braised pork belly. Babi Assam, a pork stew cooked with tamarind juice. The Christine community also cook a similar dish of pork and tamarind gravy. Ench Cabin, deep fried chicken pieces marinated in a paste of coconut milk and rempa, spices. Itik Tim or Kiam Chie Ark Thing is a soup of duck, preserved mustard greens and cabbage flavored with nutmeg, Chinese mushrooms, tomatoes and peppercorns. Ju Hu Char is a dish made up mainly of shredded vegetables like turnip or jicama, carrot, and cabbage and fried together with thinly shredded dried cuttlefish. Kari Kapitan is a Penang Nanya take on the ubiquitous chicken curry. Kaffir lime leaves and coconut milk are among the key ingredients for this mild curry. Caribou bee hoon is a salad dish consisting of rice vermicelli mixed with sambal belican, calamansi lime juice, and finely chopped herbs and spices. Other famous salad dishes are caribou bok ni, cloud ear fungus, tikus telinga, caribou k, chicken, caribou k kha, chicken feet, caribou timun, cucumber, caribou kobus, cabbage, caribou kakang botol, four angled bean, caribou bak tu, pork skin. Kiam chie boi is a mixture of leftovers from kiam chie ark th. ing, ju hu char, tu thor th. ing and various other dishes. Boi literally means end laksa lamak is a type of laksa served in a rich coconut gravy served with prawns cockles lime and a dollop of sambal belican masak titik is a style of vegetable soup that makes liberal use of white peppercorns one version uses watermelon rind as the main ingredient another makes use of green or semi-ripe papaya Nasi kunyat, glutinous rice seasoned with turmeric powder, coconut milk and Assam gelugir. It is usually served with a chicken curry, ang ku kue, and pink dyed hard boiled eggs as gifts in celebration of a child of friends and family turning one month old. Nyanya bak chong, nanya style zongzi made in a similar manner as a typical southern Chinese zongzi. However, the filling is typically minced pork with candied winter melon, ground roasted peanuts, and a spice mix. The blue butterfly pea flour is used to color the rice with a shade of blue, and pandan leaves are sometimes used as the wrapping instead. Nyanya chap chie, the nyanya take of this Chinese Indonesian classic incorporates tauchu and dried or fresh prawns. Otak otak, a dish involving fish pieces wrapped in banana leaves. Two very different variations exist, one consists of a mixture of fish pieces and spice paste wrapped in banana leaves and char grilled. This version is particularly associated with the state of Malacca and the town of Muar, Johor. Penang style otak otak takes the form of a delicate steamed parcel, and the robust red-hued spice paste is eschewed in favor of a base of a spiced custard as well as aromatic herbs like Don Kadik. Perut ikan, a spicy stew, similar to Assam pitas in flavor profile, comprising mainly vegetables, herbs and getting its distinctive taste mainly from fish bellies preserved in brine and don kadik. The wild pepper leaf is from the piper stylosum or the piper sarmentosum. A classic Penang nyanya dish. Pai tea, a thin and crispy pastry tart shell filled with a spicy, sweet mixture of thinly sliced vegetables and prawns. Roti babi, a sandwich of spiced minced pork, dipped in its entirety in egg wash and deep fried. Roti babi is typically served with a dip of Worcestershire sauce and sliced red chilies. Say bak, a dish of pork marinated overnight with herbs and spices, then cooked over a slow fire and simmered to tenderness. Say bak is also traditional to Malacca's Eurasian community. Tur Thor Tiang, this soup of pig stomach requires a skilled cook to prepare and deodorize the ingredients thoroughly before cooking. Its main ingredients are pig stomach and white peppercorns. Eurasian food 
Ambilla, a tangy dish of meat cooked with long beans, kakang, brinjals, tarung, or pumpkin, labu. Kaldu pescator, a seafood soup traditionally prepared by fishermen, as well as during the feast of St. Peter. Festa San Pedro. In the local Christing dialect, usually observed on the 29th of June, the patron saint of fishermen. Curry de Ball, a quintessential Christine dish, usually cooked during Christmas season to make use of the leftover meats from feasting. It is a very spicy curry flavored with candlenuts, galangal and vinegar. Curry seku, a very dry curry prepared in a wok. Seku means bottom in Papia Christine, and the wok was probably so named because of the roundness of its shape that resembled the human bottom. Chicken pie, this meat pie, known as empada de galina or galina pia, is usually served during Christmas season and other special occasions. Fung, a curried dish of pig offal, traditionally served for Christmas. Pang susi, a savory meat bun with a dough that is bread-like and sweet in texture, made for auspicious and festive occasions such as Easter. Pes asa are commonly known as econ bacar or sambal stingray Portuguese baked, grilled fish is one of the Christine community's most famous specialties, now found in major urban areas throughout Malaysia. The fish is smothered with diced lady's fingers and a robust sambal, before it is wrapped in banana leaves as well as a layer of metal foil, and then cooked on a grill. In spite of its name, this dish has little in common with modern Portuguese fish recipes. Samore or s'more, a fragrant beef stew. Versions of this dish are found wherever the Dutch have settled in Asia, including Malacca. Soy liming, a braised dish of fried brinjals, with soy sauce and lime juice as the primary seasonings. Desserts and sweets Desserts and sweets in Malaysia are diverse, due to the multi-ethnic and multicultural characteristics of its society. Traditional Malay and Nyanya desserts tend to share a common feature however, generous amounts of coconut milk are used, and the finished product usually flavored with gula malacca, palm sugar, and pandan leaves. Some notable desserts include Agar agar, the Malay word for a species of red algae. A natural vegetarian gelatin counterpart, agar agar is used to make puddings and flavored jellies like almond tofu, as well as fruit aspics. Ice kakang, also known as air batu champur or abbreviated as ABC, this dessert consists of a base of shaved ice, colored syrup, and evaporated or condensed milk with a variety of toppings. These may include sweet corn kernels, red beans, kidney beans, sinkau, grass jelly, chendal, bua atap, fruit of the nipa palm, soaked basil seeds, peanuts, and ice cream. Acecrim patong, an ice cream popsicle made from coconut milk or milk, flavored with localized ingredients like red beans, rose syrup, durian, pandan, creamed corn and jackfruit. Its texture is different from western ice cream. Acecrim patong is less creamy and has a slightly starchy taste when it begins to melt. Batik cake, a type of chocolate cake similar like the hedgehog slice made using Marie biscuit. Bolu kaku, a traditional Christine cake topped with liberal amounts of shredded coconut and served with a custard sauce. Bubor cha cha, a nyanya dessert of bananas, sweet potatoes, taro, black-eyed beans and sago pearls cooked in pandan-flavored coconut milk. May be served hot or cold. Bubor kakang hiu, mung bean porridge cooked with coconut milk and sweetened with palm or cane sugar. It is called Kanje Mungu by the Christine community, and is usually served in conjunction with the feast day of St. John the Baptist, Festa da San Wang. Bubor Pulit Hitam, black glutinous rice porridge cooked with palm sugar and pandan leaves, served hot with coconut milk. Chendal, smooth green-colored droplets made from mung bean or rice flour, usually served by itself in chilled coconut milk and gula malacca, or as a topping for ABC. In Malacca, mashed durian is a popular topping for chendal. Coconut candy, a confection of grated coconut, sugar, condensed milk, flavoring and coloring. Coconut candies are a popular sweet served at homes during festive occasions and available at restaurants specializing in Indian sweets. 
Dana, a Malay dairy-based dessert made from milk, sugar and salt which has been acidified with whey, obtained by fermenting milk overnight with a som geluger, and steamed to form a custard-like texture. Although popular in contemporary recipes, agar agar is not used as a gelling agent for authentic data. Dodal, a sweet, sticky, and thick toffee-like confection, made with heavily reduced coconut milk, jaggery, and rice flour. Commonly served during festivals such as Eid ul-Fitr and Eid al-Adha as sweet treats for children. Halva or halwa, the term refers to a range of dense and sweet confections in Malaysia bearing similar names, though they may have little in common in terms of ingredients and texture. Various types of fudge like flour and nut-based halva cooked with ghee, which are based on traditional recipes brought over from India, are commonly available at specialist sweet shops and regularly prepared by the Indian communities for festive occasions. The Malay community have different recipes for a range of confectionery bearing similar names, which includes candied fruit and halwa muscat, a gelatinous jelly made from flour, ghee and pieces of fruit or nut which is similar in texture to Turkish delight. Hinompuka, a native Sabahan steamed confection traditionally wrapped in banana or eric maximum leaves. Sold in local markets and is also an essential food item for celebrating weddings, birthdays and festivals, hinompuka is made with a moistened blend of pounded white glutinous rice and purplish black glutinous rice to dung, sweetened with brown or palm sugar. Kadazindusan communities beyond Sabah's West Coast Division make similar desserts but are known under different names, including but not limited to Bintanik, Lampuka, Tinapung, and Pays. Variations include the substitution of rice flour batter with grated tapioca or mashed corn kernels, banana leaves or coconut husks as alternative wrappers, and the addition of ripe bananas or freshly grated coconut to the starchy mixture. Karia gula malacca, is a type of donuts that made of sweet potato and slick with smoky gula malacca, Malaysian palm sugar. Ladu, the most popular of all Indian sweetmeats in Malaysia, particularly during Diwali, Deepavali season, ladu comes in many different flavors. A typical ladu recipe involves cooking chickpea flour, semolina and ground coconut and ghee. Leng Chi Kong, Chinese, Lian Zi Jeng a mixture of cooked ingredients immersed in a sweet soup. Ingredients vary greatly depending on the cook, but lotus seed is always the primary ingredient, and the soup may include dried longan, white fungus, barley, kambang samankuk jelly and rock sugar as secondary ingredients. Leng Chi Kong may be served warm or cold. Matterhorn, crushed ice with pineapples, longan, chendal, grass jelly and lemon slices. The Kuching hawker who came up with this popular dessert as well as the original White Lady drink was inspired by the Matterhorn, an ice-capped mountain on the Swiss-Italian border. Mooncake Chinese, yubing round or rectangular pastries with a rich thick filling, traditionally eaten during the mid-autumn festival and accompanied with Chinese tea. Both the traditional baked mooncake and the snowskin version are popular and widely available in Malaysia during the festival season. Nangju, a kadazindusan dessert, which consists of jelly noodles made from fresh sago flour cooked in a coconut milk soup sweetened with palm sugar. Pandan cake, colored and flavored with pandan juice, this light and fluffy cake is also known as pandan chiffon. Payasm, a sweet spiced pudding made from starchy staples like rice or vermicelli, payasm is an integral part of traditional South Indian culture. Pengat, a soupy dessert cooked with gula malacca and coconut milk. Also known as sarawa, pengat is made with pieces of fruit like banana, jackfruit and durian, or root vegetables like sweet potatoes and tapioca. It may be reduced further into a thick dipping sauce and served with glutinous rice, roti yala, or pancakes lemping. Pisang goreng, a common snack sold by street vendors, battered fried bananas are also served in a more elaborate manner at some cafes and restaurants as a dessert. Sempedic and various tuber vegetables are also battered and fried in the same manner as variations. Pudding Daraha, also known as royal pudding, this dessert was developed and served to the royal family of Pahang state. Its basic ingredients are pisang lamak manis, a local cultivar of banana, evaporated milk, prunes, candied cherries and cashew nuts. The pudding is garnished with yala emas, and served with a cold sauce made from milk and cornflour. 
Nowadays it is popularly served during Ramadan, as well as a special afternoon tea treat for the family on weekends. Sago pudding, a dessert of cooked translucent sago pearls, which may be served as a liquid dessert with coconut milk and palm sugar, or allowed to set as a pudding, sago gula malaka, and drizzled with thickened coconut milk and gula malaka syrup. Sarawak layer cake, these famously intricate layer cakes are essential for festive occasions celebrated throughout Sarawak, like Hari Raya, Chinese New Year, Gawai and Christmas. Sugi cake, a baked speciality of the Eurasian community, made with semolina flour and a high concentration of egg yolks. Tangyan Chinese, Tang Yuan or Tang Yuan, plain white or colored sweet dumplings made from glutinous rice flour. Traditionally homemade and eaten during Yuangxiao, Chinese, Yuan Shao as well as the Dongzi Festival, Chinese, Dongji Tangyan is now available year-round sold as dessert. Tangyan dumplings with filling are usually served in a lightly sweetened clear syrup, while unfilled ones are served as part of a sweet dessert soup. Tapai, a popular dessert at Malay homes throughout peninsular Malaysia during Hari Raya, made from fermented glutinous rice or tapioca. Tapai may be eaten on its own, or served with contemporary toppings like ice cream, chocolate and fruit. Not to be confused with the alcoholic beverage from Saba, also known as tapai, which is made from the same ingredients and with similar methods but have undergone advanced stages of fermentation to produce alcoholic content. Tao Fu Fa or Do He, Chinese, Do Fu Wa or Do Wa, a velvety pudding of very soft silken tofu, traditionally flavored with a brown sugar syrup. UFO tart Chinese, Niu Shi Dui This consists of a flat thin base of baked mini butter sponge cake topped with a creamy egg custard, which is in turn crowned with a meringue slurry. Its name in Chinese literally means cow pile dung, which alludes to the piped shape of the cake base's toppings and the meringue's darker shade as a result of caramelization. Popularized by a Hainanese bakery in Sandakan in the 1950s, the popularity of these treats has spread to Kota Kinabalu and several other towns in Sabah. Vegetarianism in Malaysia as of 2012, about 1 million people within Malaysia's total population were practicing vegetarians, and vegetarian food is much easier to obtain when dining out today. However, because of the heavy emphasis on meat and seafood by traditional Malay cuisine as well as the common inclusion of shrimp paste and other seafood products in many local dishes, diners may find it difficult to negotiate their way around menus in search of vegetarian or vegan food in Malay cuisine restaurants. Restaurants that display signs with the word sayur sayuran, vegetarian or the Chinese characters su or jai will offer a decent variety of food for diners who abstain from meat. There are many of them across the county, particularly in urban areas. These restaurants serve only vegetarian, vegan food and absolutely no meat or animal products is used in their cooking. Even restaurants that specialize in meat and seafood will make vegetarian dishes upon request. Some meat-serving restaurants have a vegetarian section in their menu. Over 80% of Malaysian Chinese identify themselves as Buddhists, and some follow a vegetarian diet at least some of the time. Some vegetarian Chinese cuisine restaurants offer an exclusively vegetarian menu, Chinese, sushi jai featuring Chinese dishes which resemble meat dishes in look and even taste like roast pork, fried fish with skin, and bones, and chicken drumsticks, complete with a bone. These restaurants are run by proprietors who abstain from consumption of animal products and strong-tasting vegetables and spices as way of life for religious reasons, and are essentially vegan. The meat analogs used are often locally produced as opposed to imported, and are made solely from ingredients like soy, gluten, mushrooms and tuber vegetables. Organic vegetarians has also slowly become a trendy modern vegetarian dietary nowsady. Most of the organic vegetarian menu will include superfood ingredients for example, organic quinoa, millet, chia seeds, flax seeds, avocado, egg, tofu, pine nuts, blueberry, almond milk and etc. A lot of organic fruit and vegetables are locally produced in recent years. There is even an organic version of vegetarian sambal balakan, nasi lemak chili paste and etc. Buddhist vegetarian restaurants are likely to be found in areas with a high concentration of Chinese and tend to be especially busy on certain festive days where many Buddhists adopt a strict vegetarian diet for at least a day. In Buddhism, some people who are full-time vegetarians are observing the Buddhist five precepts. 
They are vegetarian because they are observing the precept to abstain from killing or harming living beings intentionally. Another precept is to abstain from taking drugs or intoxicants for enjoyment, hence, alcohol is not used in most pure vegetarian shops. This is different, however, when ordering vegetarian food off the menu of restaurants that serve meat dishes. Vegetarianism has a long and revered tradition in Indian culture. Some Malaysian Indians are born and bred vegetarians who often hail from a family line with generations of vegetarians. Some others practice vegetarianism on auspicious festivals such as Thai Pongal, Hindu New Year, Deepavali, full moon prayers, and on certain days of the week as a symbol of respect when they visit holy temples. Abstaining from meat before fulfilling a vow is a common practice to bring the body to a neutral and focused state, physically and mentally, during Thaipusam and other holy prayer events. Dishes, of South and North Indian types, are based on the ancient concept of Ayurveda and are known to include Arusavai or six types of tastes. Some Indian vegetarian dishes may incorporate dairy products and honey lacto-vegetarian. Some others are heavily based on lavish coconut milk and nuts. There are many Indian eateries and restaurants in Malaysia that offer a pure vegetarian menu. South Indian restaurants, in particular, offer no shortage of meatless options such as tali meal, also known as banana leaf rice, which is often vegetarian by default, and a wide array of sweets, snacks and light meals such as kesari, tos, idli, upuma, vade, avial, idiapam and paniaram. See also References External links Media related to cuisine of Malaysia at Wikimedia Commons